Welcome everybody! It is Sunday, April 9th, 2023, and I'm told by religious people all over the place that today is a significant day, but I gotta tell you, it's just sort of a Sunday for me. How are you, Matt? I'm, I'm doing well. It's, uh, it's definitely Sunday. That That's, much I sorted out. You know, I, uh, I, I've thought about this a few times. I don't know if we've talked about it. I was so programmed. That's the wrong one. I was so programmed with Sunday being a routine that I feel like I still, even in adulthood over a decade later, experience the sensation of Sunday where you just sort of get the feel of like today is Sunday. Your brain has something in it that differentiates Sunday, Sunday, it. Sunday. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And our most busy day on the line. And to that end, by the way, tonight on the line, if you go over to uh, patreon.com slash call the line, you become a patron, you'll be able to join Matt Dillahunty and Arden Hart tonight in a Zoom call at 7 p.m. CST. That's roughly four hours from right now. Uh, and you'll be able to hang out and do a little Zoom one-on-one, face-to-face. Well, not one-on-one, like Last time was like 30 or 40 on one, but uh, Zoom face-to-face. Oh, with, this time it's on two. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, face-to-face with Matt and Arden. I'll be there a little bit at the very beginning, uh, uh, but probably won't distract from the festivities. You can do that again. Patreon.com slash call the line. And by the way, more than ever, as we are laying out our goals for the next year or so, uh, we are, are trying to become hyper-focused on making sure that there is a great value for those people who want to support on Patreon, not just in directly as, as, as patrons, uh, you get to do this, uh, but also this sort of general increase of value from the channel. Uh, we, I did announce very late on Twitter last night, and I, I will admit I wasn't in a sober state when I did so, uh, uh, but you know, my bad, uh, we are, we are officially designating this weekend one year from now as the target yes. weekend for line con, the first convention for the line that also happens to be when there will be, well, what it was your idea. So why don't you, why don't you explain why the date is so great? Well, some people sent me some messages and then I looked around and it turns out that on April 8th, 2024, one year from yesterday, there will be a total solar eclipse and Austin in the Hill Country will be one of the prime locations to view that total solar eclipse. And I was like, you know, we've been talking about um, working towards the community center. We've been talking about having some sort of convention get together. We'd love to give people an incentive. What better way to do it than, you know, American Atheist did this um, a number of years ago and now you watch now that we've announced it for all i know um nick fish is going to message me and say i was just getting ready to announce that next year's convention is going to be but i don't know what weekend is easter and it's always easter weekend there but it, it made sense it's a good opportunity to come down hang out with those of us uh who are in the austin area and you get to see you know, a, a total solar eclipse uh, however we will say we can't guarantee a thing right now this is literally, yeah. I had an idea. I mentioned it to Jimmy. Jimmy said, yes, we announced it. There's been no planning. And I know this is going to come as a shock to some of you, but Jimmy and I cannot control the weather, yeah. which means you could get all the way down here. And then instead of seeing an overcast, a, 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 a total eclipse, you could just see clouds. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Take that into account. I'm working on that whole controlling the weather thing, but I can't find whatever technology Alex Jones is certain the government has. Uh, so yeah, for the moment, not, but I, it, it would be a very exciting thing. One of the things that's going to matter a lot to all of these goals would be, uh, that Patreon support. So patreon.com slash call the line. If you want to be a part of how we are continuing to grow and expand, it's pretty impressive. Uh, we had a few meetings this week where I busted out a bunch of charts and was just basically like, y'all, this is, this is going insane and it's only going to get more so from here. So, uh, uh, anyway, that's, that's as much I feel like. Uh, pro self promotion that I feel like doing until the very end of the show. Don't forget, after the show at five o'clock, two hours from now, I'll be headed over to Aaron Ra's channel to read the Book of Mormon with Aaron and the people there. I think I'm pretty sure that's happening. Isn't Aaron in whatever? Okay, anyway, we're going to start calls and I'm going to verify that there is a show today. I think Aaron's, uh, Aaron, Aaron's at a. Aaron is at the American Atheist Convention yeah. right now. I would be very surprised. I can't yeah. say for sure, but I would be very surprised. I I, I feel like. I feel like somebody would have said something to me and maybe they did, but, uh, yeah, I don't see an event on his channel. So I think I'm wrong. I think we're not doing it anyway. Let's, uh, yeah, let's just take calls. Uh, so actually, calls. In that case, 
no hard stop tonight. Uh, and we'll probably take advantage of that. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's go. Let's, let's start with, well, who do you have a preference of? You can, you can pick calls. I think I always do. I think I always steal the honor. Yeah, I I will do that. I'm going to happily start with Don in Georgia. Awesome. Uh, pronouns are he, him, and wants to, I'm confused, Don. Uh, first of all, welcome to the show. You're on the line with Matt and Jimmy, but I'm the, the call screener message here says, likes to speak to the hosts about an improvement in their methodology. And does there mean your methodology or our methodology? Thank you for having me on the show, Matt, Jimmy. I appreciate it. I've been a long time listener. Uh, I'm speaking about uh, how you all deal with people that call in and want to push some sacred text, specifically the Bible, which is likely the most often that you uh, deal with. What what methodology do you think we have? Because I'm not aware of one. Well, uh, I was a little uh, stuck for words to to give this call screener a simple summary of what I wanted to talk about. So I, okay, I just go, said just, methodology. Just go for it. Yeah, give it to okay. us. Okay, well... In my past, I mean, I've dealt with a lot of uh, theists, mainly Christians, a few Muslims, some Scientologists, et cetera, uh, online, uh, interpersonal. And one of the problems I seem to have is when they want to push a biblical scripture, they seem to waffle, to dance around it. So normally what I was suggest- wanting to suggest to you all was that you specifically inquire to their perspective on scripture such as asking them, do you hold the Bible to be inerrant? Or is it possible that there's contradictions or something along those lines so that when they start to uh, backpedal, when they start to say, oh, well, that's metaphor. And I know you've in fast how asked theists, how do you decide what is metaphor? What is out of context? Give me a specific method to determine that. The theist never, never wants to come up with an actual method. They, they just want to make the proclamation and expect it to be swallowed. I, so sorry, Don, I have a question. I have a question. Are you just calling with a general note of, we? I think atheists who are arguing would be better for doing something like this? Or is this specifically you see something that you think is lacking in our show and you're calling to say, hey, I think your show would be better if you would utilize this method of engaging with uh, theists as I don't currently see you engaging in this method I consider superior. Well, I wouldn't say superior. I mean, I think you, you gentlemen are very, very uh, knowledgeable. And Matt is, I mean, he's got logical fallacies and scripture down almost by rote memory. Uh, I think it's just a suggestion that I, I think might resolve some of these problems because, you know, part of it is actually nailing a theist's foot to the floor. You know, you have to basically hold them to account with their direct statements as to, I believe this or I don't believe that, which in most cases the both of you do. But I, I noticed that this was kind of lacking in how you approach this question. Uh, and several times I've seen Matt have to deal with uh, a, a statement, well, this is true. Well, what about, and then Matt will respond, well, how do you know this? Or how can you validate that? And then they want to dodge and shift and dance to go backwards and say, oh, it's metaphor, or oh, are you taking it out of context, or something along those lines. And by asking them up front, What is your position on the Bible? Is it literal? Is it inerrant? Are there metaphors? Then they can't do that, which is something, like I said, I've done, and boy, they hate it. Okay. Because it's. Matt, do you you want us to engage it, or do you want to just say thanks for the note and open the line for somebody else? Well, my temptation is to um, actually let's play this out. Because quite frankly, if it if I thought it was remotely relevant whether they considered the Bible inerrant or not, I would ask the question. The fact is, the overwhelming majority of of believers that we're likely to engage with don't consider the Bible to be inerrant, except in its original form, and understand that there are definitely metaphors. And and there's you know picking out 
I think this verse is literal and I think this verse is metaphor is one of the most common things. And so if you were to ask them, do you think the Bible is inerrant? Uh, even if they say yes, then the follow-up question is, okay, um, what about metaphor? Well, metaphor is irrelevant to whether or not it's, it's inerrant. Um, the fact that there's a metaphor in the book doesn't mean that it's become errant. So when it's relevant to the question, I would certainly ask them what they think about the Bible. But the fact of the matter is, the mere, the mere point of them, or the mere exercise of them saying, hey, here's this passage, um, what difference does it make what they think about other passages? They're talking about a particular passage, and it only matters what they think about that one. Whether they think Genesis 1 is inerrant has no bearing on what they think of Judges 11.1. I see. Well, part I'm, I didn't uh, add this to it when, when Jimmy asked me. Part of it is to expand and, and refine my own methodology for, for approaching this question with other people. So I appreciate, <clears throat> pardon me, I appreciate your input. Uh, I, if, if you don't mind, I have uh, two small comments. Then I'd like to let the, let the, you all yeah, go, go back to just go ahead. Callers. Yeah. Sure, go ahead. Go for it. Uh, one is Matt, you and I both uh, have the similar service, except where you were in the Navy, I was in the Marines. That's not similar service. You should know that. No, we're both part of the Navy. <laughs> you know, we don't count Marines. We just drove you guys around. Oh, we're going to go there, huh? Okay, well, we both, we both served. Of course and we're going to go there. I mean... I, I don't see. I so appreciate. It. Thanks call. for your service. Uh, I I don't. Uh, what did you say? This is the weirdest call. Is what I said. Anyway, it, it's <laughs> it's up there. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. I appreciate Thanks, your time. Yeah, have a good. Uh, one. Have yep. a happy, happy, happy. <clears throat> have a happy zombie Jesus day. Sure. Thanks. I will do my best. I um. I probably lost my cool last week too quickly when the person called in to say, use this metaphor instead of that metaphor. I probably could have just engaged and said, yeah, maybe, maybe not. I don't, I don't care. Uh, uh, I'm going to use whatever metaphor comes to mind because generally we're, we're running off the cuff and it's basically uh, uh, improv half the time up here. Not, not improvising the truth, just how, what direction we take things. Uh, I, am most impressed when I see good methods of engagement modeled and I watch a person do it and go, Ooh, I'm going to tweak something I do. And I've done it in doing shows with Matt. I've done it in doing shows with Shannon and doing shows with Forrest. There's the, with everybody, I've, I've, all these people tweak it. I don't love when a person who isn't in the space calls in and goes, I think you should do it this way. Cause my answer is inevitably going to be though. It comes off as somewhat arrogant and asshole -ish, Go do a show, go do it, model it, show that it's better than what we're doing. And I guarantee you, it's going to change how I do things. If you can model what's better, I'm, it, it will adjust how I do things. So I'm just going to leave it at that. And, and thanks. Thank the caller. For calling in. Yeah, I'm happy to have you know, any questions and comments and people, but it's like when when somebody calls in and says, "Hey, um, you know," as as Don did, and I'm not faulting Don at all. Well, I see you guys, and when people do this, I think you should do that. Well, I need an example of a specific call. I've been doing this for 20 years. No two call. Well, all right. I was going to say no call. Two calls are exactly the same. Some calls are very similar, but most calls aren't as similar as people think. And so, if somebody, I usually I can't remember. I was sitting here while Don was talking. I was trying to think of the last time somebody called in to say, "Here's what the Bible says," as as the foundation of of their point, where we would have cared whether or not they think the Bible is literal uh, and whether or not it would have mattered to change it. I can't even remember the last time somebody called in and said, here's what the Bible says. Um, usually it's further on in the discussion where they'll yeah. try to cite something. And in that case, it's them using a, a passage of the Bible as, as a foundation for why they believe something. And maybe it matters then. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Um, yeah. 
yeah, I mean, it'd probably be better to say, to wait and say, because we divide these shows up into clips with individual calls, right? Yeah. It might be better to go in and find the clip of the individual call and send an email and say, hey, quickly, at timestamp two minutes and 22 seconds into this video, um, th they asked this question, and I and you could say, I think your response was was lacking. You could have gone this direction, or you could say, why didn't you ask this question? Because sometimes it may just be, yeah. hey, I'm on a roll, and I have a specific point I'm driving to, and those extra distractions just get in the way. Um, sometimes it may be that I forgot. I'm not claiming that I'm always going to do it right or anything else like that. So yeah, no, yeah, I agree. Uh, by the way, so I've I've just sent a note to the call screener, Adam. If you call back in, uh, you had an abortion related thing you wanted to talk about. If you call back in, even though our atheist lines are presently full, we have plenty of lines for theists. Theists, we we like to give you priority. Please call in if you are a theist and you want to discuss the resurrection, whatever, we want to talk to you. If you're a person who is spiritual, if you're a person who is whatever, any type of religious, spiritual belief, we'd love to talk to you about it. Uh, Adam, specifically, if you were an atheist and that was why your call got terminated, uh, I've let the call screener know that if you call back in, you can go in the queue even though the atheist lines are full. So Adam, we'd love to, uh, we'd love to have you. But otherwise, uh, atheist lines are presently full. If you want to try and get an atheist uh, call in, your your best bet is to call as an atheist call is wrapping up. Uh, that's your best shot at things. We'll probably get more calls in today since we don't have a hard stop because I think Matt and I would do it all night if there was no reason to stop, uh, uh, you know, other than myself getting grumpy or sleepy. All right. Well, we have that, that 7 o'clock Zoom call. That's true. That's so true. Yeah. I got I to gotta stop by then. but That's true. On yeah. the line, we have um, from Sweden... Pronouns are he, him. Uh, Perfect Dawa. Is this the same gentleman that I debated? Yes, hello. Yes. <clears throat> hello, Matt. How are you? How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How about you? I'm doing all right. Uh, it says here you want to discuss why we need God. Um, yeah, what difference actually, does it make? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, actually, uh, I was going to say that... Uh, uh, that topic we uh, had together was the first time I uh, had that topic. That's why that's why I didn't have enough experience. And uh, thank you for that debate because I got enough experience uh, to debate that. Uh, you topic. got enough experience uh, from one debate. Well, congratulations. Yes, yes. I still don't have uh, enough experience, and I've been doing this yes. for twenty years. So clearly, you're way I mean, better at it than I am. Yeah, but what are you uh, calling about today? Had, yes, I'm calling that. Uh, I would like to know what would make you uh, to believe? Because that day, I, I unfortunately, um, I thought that um, those um, you know verses that I brought up uh, would convince you, but um, I understood that uh, they were not enough for you. But I, I was uh, wondering if I, for example, split the moon for you, would that make you to uh, believe that uh, God exists? Why would you splitting the moon for me make me think that God exists? I mean, I, I'm asking you if that would make you to believe. No, I'm, I'm, so I'm asking you a question to specifically emphasize this point. You just said, if okay. you split the moon for me, would that convince me that God exists? So yeah. first of all, let's say the moon was split. How do I know that you did it? And what does that, how, does that, how could that possibly demonstrate a God? Okay, um, let's put it like this, that if God told me, that I give you a miracle so that you can convince Matt that I exist, okay. okay? Okay, so for example, this time I would say to everybody, the entire planet, and you as well, that uh, I'm going to split the moon so that um, eight, uh, atheists, they watch it and they believe that God exists. So if you saw that, would you believe that God exists? No, but... Does okay, the so God that you put, hang, hang on, hang on. Okay. The God that you're advocating for, does okay. that God want me to know that he exists? Actually, uh, God wants uh, that you follow his command, okay? I, okay, stop. I'm asking okay. very specific questions. Why are you asking, answering a different question? Does okay. the God that you're talking about want me to know that he exists 
actually not it is not so important for him that he wants you to know that he exists okay then why are we talking about it so because we need god okay i um my question is that no i don't need i don't need god mm -hmm. and i don't give a shit about, i don't need god and i don't give a shit about a god that doesn't have any interest okay. in demonstrating that he exists because if he okay. doesn't demonstrate that he ex stop talking okay all right if, if he doesn't you. stop Even fucking doesn't... talking okay i'm gonna okay. mute you now stop talking over me if your god does not care whether or not i know that he exists then he is an idiot because if he expects me to follow his commandments, I would first need to know that he exists and those commandments are from him, wouldn't I? Okay. All right. Okay. Now, wouldn't I? I, talk? I just, I talk? Oh, no, you will never, ever be allowed to talk on any show that I ever do if you just sit there and wait for me to stop talking and not answer the question I just asked you. I just put a question to you. If your God wants me to follow his commandments, Okay. Does he want me to do that even if I don't believe that he exists? Okay, now he's now I can talk, yeah? No, now, now you're I fucking can... done. No, you're fucking I'm never ever ever going to take a call from you again unless you answer the question that I'm asking. Why is conversation so difficult for you? I asked you a question, I paused, now you can answer it. So let me try this one more time. And if you get this wrong, you are done. Okay. Here we go. Can you ask? Can I your ask? God, you, you said your God wants me to follow his commandments. Yes, yes or no? Yes, yes. Does he want me to follow his commandments even if I don't believe that he exists? Yeah, he wants that you follow his commandments. He's an idiot. Why would anybody follow the commandments of a God that they don't believe exists? Okay, so now I can ex answer your question, yeah? Why he, do he doesn't I want... I just to asked you, what the fuck is wrong with you? I said, because why would any God expect yeah, someone to, to follow their commandments if they don't believe they exist? That was the Matt, question, answer it. Okay, okay, Matt, if, I mean... God asked you to love one another. If he exists or doesn't I exist, asked you, you a question. If you I swear to the God that you're trying to fucking shill for, if you don't answer the question that I've asked you, I will hang up and you will never get to speak on any program that I'm ever on again. Do you understand? Yes or no? <laughs> you get very angry, man. I get no. very angry when you refuse to answer the question you're asked. I just said, do you understand, yes or no? I understand very well, yes, definitely. Cool. Then please, the question that we're asking is, I said, why would any God expect someone who doesn't believe they exist to follow their commandments? Because if you don't believe that God exists, then there is no authority and no reason to follow the commandments. Would you follow the commandments of a God that you don't believe exists? That's the question. Okay. Would you, I say, would yes. you follow yes. the commandments of a God that you do not believe exists? Yes or no? Okay. Can I ask, answer your question? Please? Yes or no? Yeah. You, okay, yes, if it is a nice commandment, if it is a good commandment, I don't care from where it comes, okay? It's a good commandment, it will help me and to, you know, it will solve our problems, then I follow, it doesn't matter who sends this, it's a messenger, and you're it's a liar, following a commandment, whatever. you're following, you are, uh, you are, ta you are uh, behaving consistent with an instruction you agree with. That's not a commandment. Okay. So if you don't believe that God exists, you will not love one another, you would not uh, take care of orphans, you don't, you don't give uh, charity because God doesn't exist? Or Excuse me, you? no, 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 I do those things and I don't believe okay. that God exists. Okay, so that's, that's what my point is that, that <clears throat> all he wants from you is these commands that you follow them, be a good person and, uh, you know... Dawa, so, stop. Yeah. Tell, okay, how do you know that that's what God wants from me?
okay, because it, he's re, has written in his commands, okay? I, no, 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 no. How do you know that he has commands that he has written? So, okay, I say for me, uh, you know why I converted to, I'm a converted Muslim, okay? I converted to Islam not because God exists, because of the commands, because of the commands that I saw in how Quran. How do you know I, that they are God's commands? So I say, look, uh, for example, um, uh, Gandhi, he wasn't the God. Okay? How, was, how do you Gandhi, know that they're God's commands? Okay, I said that. Uh, I say that it, it is, okay, because I, uh, a person 1,400 years ago couldn't have... How written do you know things. that they are God's commands? Because I said, as I said, a person 1,400 years ago no. couldn't have written that book. How do you know okay? that they are God's commands? This is your last chance. I, get, I answered you. Because I told you, no, that you people didn't. Have thousands Goodbye. of thousands Goodbye. Muslim apologists are the worst. I'm going to be debating a Muslim in two weeks in Dallas, Texas. I've been doing this for 20 years, and people like to laugh and joke at Ray Comfort and whoever else among the Christian, the bottom of the barrel Christian apologists are absolutely terrible. They don't understand logic. They don't understand logical fallacies. They don't, they don't, they want to stick with their script. They don't answer the questions. But now that I've engaged with Muslim after Muslim after Muslim for months now, they are the worst. Yeah. They are the least intelligent, least understanding of fallacies. They have the least evidence they are the most confused it, it is absolutely embarrassing yeah it is it is absolutely embarrassing how bad they are even amongst their uh, their so-called moderate group they are as bad as like the young earth what we laugh at from young earth creationists by default when they say things like the uh, by the way the thing i was interested in uh 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 had he started engaging honestly I was, if he's allowed to ask a hypothetical question, I don't see why I can't give a hypothetical answer, which is yes. Let's say hypothetically, yes, if you split the moon, that would convert me, or at least it would convert other people, because for, for sure it would. Now what? You going to split it? What What is the purpose oh, of this hypothetical that isn't even a hypothetical, because it won't I happen? I know the purpose of this, and, and this is the part that it isn't necessarily clear for people. What they want to do is say, even if I were to split the moon, these, these atheists still wouldn't believe. That's what they want to do. But they're too stupid to understand the flawed epistemology they're engaged with. If yeah. you were to say to me, God just sent me a message, and he is going to split the moon in half tomorrow at noon, at noon central time, and I will be standing right next to you when it happens. And then they came over, and at noon we walked out. Well, I don't know why you'd split the moon at noon. It's rarely up and visible, but yeah. on this day, we'll make sure that the, the moon's visible at noon, because that does happen on occasion. And they're standing right next to me, and at noon, the moon splits in two. Here's what I know. I know that I've seen, apparently, the moon split in two. And I know that someone said this was going to happen, and it was going to happen because of a god. However, how do I rule out alien technology that I don't know? How do I rule out some sort of power that this person has? How do I rule out 25,000 other things? And at the end of the day, if, you're con if that were scenario were to play out and you became convinced that that God exists, you would have flawed epistemology. Because yeah. first of all, if there was a God who can split the moon, why does he need you to come tell me that's what he's going to do? Why does he need to split the moon at all? A God with power like that could very clearly, unequivocally, come up with a proper test scenario that demonstrates his power immediately to anyone and everyone. Your yeah. hypothetical, as Jimmy pointed out, is stupid. It demonstrates the flawed epistemology that you theists already begin with. Your yeah. epistemology is so flawed that you accept bullshit claims about the supernatural, that zombie Jesus rose from the dead, that, um, that you know, countless miracles that have nothing but a claim, and you think that that's sufficient 
to, to justify this. You, if you are a theist, your brain is broken, not in a mental illness way, in a <laughs> flawed foundational way where you have a flawed epistemology because you're willing to accept the supernatural under grounds that you can't. Perfect Dawa, who I already debated and posted a debate review about, is absolutely, first of all, he's a liberal Muslim. So you're not going to get him on the, oh, he doesn't think that Muhammad actually married a six-year-old and consummated at nine. Uh, he doesn't think the moon was split in half, which really pisses me off that he decided to use that as an example. He is literally dumber than a sack of hammers when it comes to epistemology. He doesn't understand what should convince, which is why when I went down this road of saying, how do you know that these are the commands of God? He just talks about this convinced me, and how could a man 1,400 years ago have known this stuff? You haven't demonstrated that Muhammad did know anything. What's happened here is that science discovered stuff, and you guys go back and find a way to fit it in. Meanwhile, uh -huh. the Quran is absolute garbage and is wrong about countless things. Is it better than the Bible in some areas? Sure. But you know what's not? Muslim epistemology is horribly flawed. They don't yeah. know a thing and Christians aren't, are, are maybe barely better, and Mormons are probably worse than both of them. Nah, it depends. Come on, Joseph Smith made this shit up just oh, within yeah, yeah. living memory. Yeah, of course, of course. It's, but it's, it's <laughs> argument, uh, actually engaging in an argument I would find more intellectually challenging with a lot of Mormons than certainly perfect oh. Dawah. Yeah. Mormons, every Mormon I've engaged in an argument with, they just give up. And, and smile testimony <laughs> and say, yes, well, that was a nice talk. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's true. But, you know, in the case of Perfect Dawa, he does not understand what should convince, which is why he's convinced. And yeah. this is the thing that I find that is so sad. I keep running up across these individuals. Oh, I became convinced of this religion. Well, great. Thank you for demonstrating that you don't understand the basics of what should convince anyone. Yeah. It's sad. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm I, I'm willing to put it out here. This isn't something I think Matt would be willing to do. If anybody reckons they can split the moon, whatever the power is, I agree to suspend my skepticism and start believing in their God. Uh, you just got to do it. I'm I'm gonna put that challenge. See, and I can't. Yeah. I I would I would absolutely. If you split the moon, I'll believe that. You know, we did the same thing with resurrections. If you resurrect yeah. somebody from the dead, I'll believe that they're resurrected. How they were resurrected is another story. Yeah. For me, it's I, I'll, I'll suspend the skepticism and do it. Go ahead, split the moon, and I'm in. I don't. I don't even know. I, I I don't know how you can suspend. I don't know how anybody can suspend skepticism. I I will believe that you split the moon. Yeah. Well, I'll die shortly but, after the the moon splitting would be disastrous for us all. But yeah. Uh, all right. Well, yeah. Go let's ahead. Try again because it, it it's let's try again. It's Easter and and I'm in a mood and so I'm gonna. Take a deep breath and welcome Danny, uh, pronouns are she, her, a, a theist from New Jersey to the show, um, who also wants to tell us why we need God. So welcome, Danny. Excellent. Hi. Um, hi, Matt. Hi, Jimmy. Hi, Danny. You're a bit quiet. Howdy. I don't know if you can talk a little bit more directly into your microphone or what's going on. If we're on speaker, definitely take it off speaker. Uh, can you hear me? I sure do. What, 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 yep. what did you want to tell us? Oh, can you, can you say that again? What did, what did you want to share with us? What do you want to tell us? What do you want to ask us? Oh, um, okay. Do you guys, I don't know if you guys remember me. I talked to you about maybe a month ago. Um, Let's assume we don't remember and just keep going. Okay. <laughs> well, um, all right. I'm, I'm Danny from New Jersey. And um, last time I talked to you, um, I was like, uh, I, okay, I don't even remember the topic, but anyway. That's fine, Danny, um, just give us today's I'm topic. I'm, I'm, it, it says okay, here that, that you told the call screener, humans are foolish, that's why we need God. Yes, yes, that's, that's today's topic. Okay, so what made me want to call you guys today is because, well, I was having a a conversation with my mom and we were talking about God and like what's going on in like today and like politics and you know things of that nature and so 
I just been so down and like kind of depressed at things going on, the, the shootings and the corruption in our in our in our country. And it's just like it's like no matter what we what we do, evil and corruption just you can't get a foothold on it. And my mom kind of she kind of said she kind of gave me this insight on what she believes, and she told me that no matter what, that that um humans are we're just flawed and we're foolish. And that we can't even direct our own footsteps. That's like a scripture in the Bible or something. And that our only hope is to wait for um, Jesus to come back and the new resurrection and paradise. Yeah, Danny. Let me let me see if I can summarize what you're saying here, because you're kind of, and, and if we can try and be a little bit quicker and more concise on on uh, uh, this is it's sort of dragging out here. But what you're seeming to say is there's so much evil in the world uh, that we never seem to be able to overcome. Every time it looks like things are getting better, something happens. It looks like things get worse, and that our only hope is a God who is higher than all of that evil, but who is doing nothing to stop that evil. Is that accurate? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have questions. Well, yeah, go on. I mean, like, well, how much of that evil comes from religion? Thought. How much of the evil comes from religion? A lot, a lot. How much of it comes from religious people? A lot. What's God done to stop either one of those? As far as I can tell, not, not much. What's Nothing. God done to stop any evil ever in the history of the world? Because I, I can tell nothing. Yeah, and so if so, God clearly isn't doing anything to help. And so, yeah. what your mom's saying is that we, we need to wait on Jesus. Um, haven't we? Haven't people? Plenty of people been waiting on Jesus for thousands of years now. Yeah. What good well, did that I, do? Nothing, but she yeah, says so, that like, we're in the last, we're in the last days of. of yeah, we're in the last days. We've been in the last days since the first days. That's a common trope in religion. They, this is, uh, it's the last days. It's the last days. It's the last days. My mom thinks we've been in the last days. Um, the, the the generation before that did. The generation before that did. The, okay, this is this is what's happening. Religious people look at the world, and they throw up their hands and say, well, we're just screwed. We're just going to have to keep waiting for Jesus, and he's coming back any day. Some of us would rather stop throwing up our hands and work to actually fix the world and make it better. Yeah. I have no use for religion at all. I mean, that's, that's what I want to do. I, I, I'm active in voting. I volunteer. I, I try to do my best to be a good person. And Yep. I'm, even though I'm flawed, but my mom always tells me that it's not even worth it. Your mom's wrong. And yeah, I just, definitely. I get very just. It gets, it's very distressing, depressing, and yeah, it just makes me feel like uh, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I mean, last time I talked well, to you, um, last time I talked to you guys, I. I I told you I was a deist, but Jimmy said I was a theist. I'm not sure why. I don't remember, but if, if 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 we had the conversation and I asked you whether you believe in a God or not, and you said you do believe in a God, I would have said you're a theist. If you said that I don't believe in a God, but I'm open to the possibility that it could be, then you're an atheist if you don't hold the active position of believing in a God, that's most likely the conversation that happened. I actually am not even clear because of how quiet your voice is, whether or not you said, I just said, I called you a theist or an atheist last time. No, no, no. Deist. A deist deist. is what I called you last time. Yes. Deist is a type of theist. I I call myself a deist. Okay. Oh, so it doesn't matter. So if, if you called yourself a deist, 
and then I said you're a theist and that you aren't a yeah. deist, it was because you presented in some way a way that God cares about our planet at all uh, uh, is, is anything but indifferent. And now we're starting to hear the audio also echo back. So if you can figure out your audio situation, I don't want to hear my voice. Uh, but uh, I, and I think I vaguely remember that that was the case, that your idea of a God that you were calling yourself deistic for still might care about the planet in some way, that he doesn't meet the planet with indifference, that we're not just sort of something in, in its creation. Oh, no. Well, my thought was is that I feel like God, like, kind of created this planet and the universe, but he kind of just watches, like, kind of like The Sims. You know the game, The Sims? Yes. Why do you believe that? Yeah. Why uh, do you believe that? Why do I believe it? Well, sometimes... <clears throat> Sometimes when I, I sometimes when I was little, I used to pray to to God, and but I, I felt like nobody was really listening. And my mom just told me that sometimes it, it's because I'm not sincere in my beliefs, and I thought maybe. Maybe she's right because I never okay. really liked our religion. Do Do you think? Do you think maybe she's right is a good reason to believe anything, ever? Because mm. maybe she's wrong. I don't know. Well, see, we we keep asking you, and you keep going back to here's what my mom said. Here's what my mom said. Maybe she's right. Here's what my mom said. Maybe she's right. Maybe she's wrong. Wouldn't it matter to t to figure out a way to tell whether or not your mom's right or wrong? Yeah. So I guess if you believe that God sits there and creates everything and watches like it's the Sims, and you believe because of something your mom said, and maybe she's right, does your mom believe that God just sits there and watches like the Sims? No, she's she's a she's a Jehovah's. Yeah. Oh, Danny, how old so, are you? Real quick. Um, I'm, I'm 28. You're 28? Okay, just making sure. Yeah. When you said you're a Jehovah's Witness, and it sounds like you don't believe, I was trying to make sure that we're not talking to a minor who's at risk of losing the safety of their home if they're not a believer under their Jehovah's yeah. Witness parent. Sorry, I just wanted to make that's sure. Something, that's something we have to take uh, into consideration. So if you care about whether or not your beliefs are true, then you've got to figure out a way to figure out whether or not they're true. And... If right now, when I say, why do you believe that? And ultimately it gets down to, I believe because my mom said something and what if she's right? Um, what if she's right, to my mind, is not a reason to believe anything. The time to believe something is when I'm convinced that she is right. Uh, I'm convinced that what she said is actually true. I'm convinced that she has good reason. And until that happens, I, I, it, it sounds like when I say, why do you believe that? All, all you're giving me is, I can't really think of a good reason, but I just kind of go with it, which is granted a lot of people do that. Yeah. And you're, you're, you're in, you're in, uh, in, in pretty good company with oh people who, who think that way, but it isn't a good way to figure out what the truth is. Right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Danny, I have, a, uh, actually. I have a question for you. If if you were to ask your mom, and maybe you have already, why? how do you know your beliefs are true? What would your mom say? Um, she would say she just knows. She feels it. Is that a good reason to believe? Um, I wouldn't know because I've never felt it. Yeah. So it's, it's, I, I assume you've interacted with other people. You are aware that lots of people claim that reasoning, right? So we, that Mormons say, I just know cause I feel it. All types of Christians say it, that that default of, I have a feeling it's true is common. Are you aware of that already? 
Yeah. So you need something more than I feel it because clearly if feeling is the basis, some people might be right, but other people are wrong with the feeling. At minimum, the feeling isn't telling the people who are actually right and not telling the people who are wrong. So there has to be something more than just the feeling. Otherwise, you can justify any religion. Do you follow me? Yeah. So if your mother can't give a better reason than I feel it, when you already know and acknowledge that that's not a good reason to believe by itself, until she gives you a good reason to believe that is exclusive, that does play out, any of the things that she's telling you are on that same basis of, well, you just don't know because you haven't had the same feeling I've had, and maybe that's your fault. Which, by the way, Jehovah's Witnesses are are considered by most who don't have a biased interest, a cult, and that is a type of shaming your cult, basically your your your, your congregation, into taking any lack of affirmation and turning it into a quality flaw of the person themselves. So, for example, I had this growing up Mormon, and my brother did because we both got blessings of healings. We both deal with medical issues. Uh, we got these blessings of healings that never came true, that all the things they said we would do uh, uh, and going on missions and all this stuff couldn't happen because of those blessings. And rather than uh, uh, even entertain that maybe the patriarch who gave us those blessings or the other member of the priesthood who gave us those blessings was wrong to say that, wasn't inspired by God, or that something else was afoot, it all turned into, well, what did you not do to make that blessing come true? How did you fail to meet the blessing? And that's why you didn't get healed. It's this type of evidence where it's, if you agree with me, you feel sufficiently validated. But if you disagree with me, we're just going to shame you and make you feel like there's something wrong with you. There's nothing true in the world that has to operate that way. If something is true, you can demonstrate the truth of it without having to invoke, and if you don't agree with this, you should be ashamed of yourself or you should be aware that you're the problem or whatever else. You can do it completely independent of it. And your mother's simply not doing that with you. Your mother is is fooled by the indoctrination that she's received. I don't know her history, but I know how intense the Jehovah's Witnesses are, and is trying to yeah. outgroup you, her daughter, for not feeling the same way. Uh, if you can ever, I mean, let her, she, I think we may have even said this last time you called. Uh, uh, if, if, you, if you are hiding from her that the show exists, that's all fine and everything. If she is aware of this show and knows what kinds of stuff we do on here, I'd love to talk directly to your mother and ask why she believes and see if there's any rational reason to even be remotely worried that she is correct when, in fact, she belongs to a charismatic type of cult Christianity, which is uniquely terrible in its method of, of truth establishment, much worse than other Christian religions, uh, and is and it depends entirely upon keeping their congregation uneducated in a way from secular sources of contradiction because they are so bad. Yeah, um, that's the reason why I never became, or, you know, that became baptized. Sure. After Jehovah's Witness because I, I've always, it always left a bad taste in my mouth how they treated my uncle after he left the faith. Yeah. He was just basically shunned. Returned. Yeah. Danny, um, it's good you weren't baptized because the probably the reason you haven't been shunned is the fact that you were never officially a member. Just so you know, it's yeah. it's probably a good thing you didn't get baptized. Otherwise, you wouldn't even have access to your mother. And keep in mind, I'm not trying to turn you against your mother generally, but that is a system yeah. your mother affirms. That is a system your mother participates in. And that's super sad. There's a there's an organization and a website, recoveringfromreligion.org. And it doesn't matter if you think you're on your way out or if you want to be out or whatever the case is, it's genuinely just an opportunity to talk to people when you are um, having struggles with religious things. I would recommend contacting recoveringfromreligion.org. Let them know what you're going through. They're going to have people who are more experts in dealing with Jehovah's Witnesses than either myself or Jimmy uh, are. But it sounds like you've been struggling with a lot of this for a long time. and you are, I, I, I 
I'm not remotely trying to be insulting, but you are displaying some characteristics that I see in people who were raised in particularly authoritarian households to where, oh, I don't know enough about this. I don't have a good reason to necessarily believe. I've got questions and I'm struggling with it. But mm -hmm. my mom said, my dad said, my pastor said, all these people who would be in a position of authority over you, they're not to be questioned. And, you know, hey, it seems to work for them. And they've got a whole church full of people and they can't all be wrong, can they? And the answer is yes, they absolutely can all be wrong. And if they're actively working to reinforce this, the, the position in themselves, in all the people in the church and in the people in, the, in their family, you're now in a position where you have either absolutely a cult or cult-like behavior, but it, more than that, whether we label it a cult or not, it's about exercising control over people to keep you from asking questions. If there is a God, mm -hmm. that God has nothing to fear from our questions. Yeah. As a matter of fact, if there's a God that's, that cares about us and, and wants us to know he exists, he should welcome questions. If I was, if I was saying, "Hey, I have a, a, an important gift for every single human, but I'm not willing to take any questions on it. I'm not willing to show up and interact with anybody. I'm just going to let, I just, I'm going to stop showing up on the show or never show up on any show. Let Jimmy talk about me. Um, find somebody else to talk about me. It's always secondhand information about these God claims." It's always, well, you know, we're just flawed human beings and we're doing our best and we got to wait because Jesus is coming back or uh, whatever. This structure is specifically designed to keep you from becoming the independent thinker that you want to be. Yeah. And every time your brain says, hmm, that doesn't sit well with me, that doesn't seem right to me, that doesn't feel good to me, and you genuinely seek what the correct answer is, and you talk to those people, do they give you an evidence-based sound reason, or do they make it about whether or not you are good enough, you are walking the walk, you are have surrendered, you have come out from behind your worship of your intellect, you need to come out and do this, all of these things with people telling you what they think about God when God won't spend one second telling you what he thinks about anything, including you. I've, I've tried actually talking to the elders about my concerns and like my questions about the religion and they treated me like I was being rebellious. Yeah, that's, that's what they do. I mean, that's, that's what they're there to do. They aren't there to engage you. They are there as a, as a group of people who are meant to bring the rest of the church to submission and you weren't submitting, which is the ultimate offense in, in the Jehovah's Witness religion. Uh, I, I, I add a resource onto what Matt just said. I also recommend you check out Owen Morgan's channel. If you want to just keep yeah. watching the specifics about what is so wrong with Jehovah's Witnesses and what specifically with the religion that you're exposed to, they get so wrong. Okay. Yeah. I didn't, I'm sorry. I'm embarrassed. I didn't mean to put you guys like that or anything. No, you're good. I didn't, I didn't even want to think about it. <laughs> Danny, it, it sounds almost like you're there's fine. a pillow now between the phone, and I'm only catching some of the words you're saying. I don't know if there's anything you do about um, it, but I was going to react to what you said, and I, but I had no idea what you said. I should have. I didn't. I don't know if I treat you guys like therapists or anything. That's no, not fine. what I intend. No, yeah, you're good. It, it, it's good stuff. When you're asking questions, that's part of what we, I would rather. Now, first of all, my favorite thing is to debate theists. Unfortunately, uh, apologists are just getting worse and worse and worse. It, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just becoming evident. Um, but the whole reason I want to debate theists is to get people to see that they don't have a leg to stand on. And uh, if they can't meet those uh, the, their bird of proof, then people shouldn't believe. And that frees people like you. The other reason we do all this, or the primary the reason we do all this, even though I love to debate, is to engage and potentially help people find their way out of religion. Um, 
the the final reason I do this is if I'm wrong and somebody actually has evidence for a God and good reason to believe in all this, I want to know because I don't want to be wrong. Mm. Um, the problem is, is that every time, you, you know, when, when I um, engage with, you know, perfect Dawa calls in and thinks that after one debate, he's, he's learned so much that he's going to be good at it and then fails to even <laughs> listen to the question that's being asked mm -hmm. in order to answer it. Instead, oh, is it my turn to talk now? Yes. When I end a sentence with a question mark directed at you, that's when, <laughs> that's when you're, you're it's, it's like, it's like a game for them, which is, by the way, not to, well, I'll, I'll deal with the perfect Dawa thing after this call. Uh, I think you mentioned at the start of your phone call a, a passage that your mom referenced about human beings not directing their own footsteps. Yeah. 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 Um, it's in Jeremiah 10, verse 23, says, Oh, Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. And it is about, it is a claim in the Bible, essentially saying that we don't guide our own path, that God guides our, our path. Um, and so it's there. Now the question then becomes, is that true? Because one of the things that your mom likes to do, and that my mom likes to do, and that plenty of other theists like to do, is when, after they've made a claim, they'll reference their favorite Bible verse that they think supports the claim. But then the question we have to ask is, is that actually true? Why should I care what the Bible says? Because the Bible says all kinds of stuff. Um, I mean, I didn't even pick this chapter, but here, let's, let's just, I'm going to, give me a number between one and 10. Oh, yes. Yep. Um, number between one and ten. Seven. 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 Verse seven there is, Who would not fear thee, O king of nations? For to thee doth it appertain. For as much as among all the wise men of the nations and in all the kingdoms there is none like unto thee. And so there's a passage saying anybody with, with any reasonable sense would be afraid of God, would be afraid of the God that is powerful, that that uh, even the wisest men of nations would do it. You can take almost any verse and turn it into a support of what you're thinking. And if you can't, you can take any verse and spin it in a way where you can make somebody think that it says something profound about their situation. That is the power of books like the Bible. Not that they're true or from a God, but that people will read into them whatever they feel, whatever they see. And so if you are finding it difficult to let go of the God concept that your mom may or may not be right about, then that is you, as verse uh, chapter 10, verse 7 says, that is you being just like the wise men of nations and in all the kingdoms, being fearful of a God. And you could do this all day long. And sometimes you're going to find things that seem very profound, and sometimes it's just a little, you know, haziness. Um, but until there's some justification for caring about what the Bible says and, and to show that it's true, nobody should be paying any attention to it or referencing it. Okay. Danny, I think I we gave you a lot to think about. Oh, I was just gonna say, I think we've given you a lot to think about and a lot to consider. What I'd recommend is go back, watch your vi watch this episode again, watch the watch specifically your call again, maybe even take some notes okay. down and stuff. But uh, uh, I think I think we've given you a lot. You can go ahead and say what you're gonna say though, and then we're gonna yeah. we're gonna head to the next call. Oh, no, that's okay. Um, I'll let you guys go. Thank you for talking. Thanks, Danny. To me. It was nice talking Absolutely. to you. Absolutely. Thanks, Danny. Bye bye. Bye. Awesome. Awesome call. Uh, one thing I wanted to, so a reminder that if you send a super chat of $5 or more in this show, we usually generally just put them on the screen because we usually have a time limit. We're probably still going to maintain that. There was one person who, who sent a uh, pretty, pretty sizable one before I think realizing before we had the pinned one. So we'll go ahead and respond to the, just the question. Uh, 
Uh, I'm just going to give it to you. How to best approach an atheist libertarian who de- adopts Christian ideology, i.e. anti-LGBT, anti-trans, etc., cetera, et cetera. Sorry. What do you think on that, Matt? Wait, one more time? Uh, how to best approach an atheist libertarian who adopts Christian ideology, i.e. anti-LGBT, anti-trans, etc. Seems to be socially conservative while claiming to be a libertarian, which actually should be antithetical to libertarianism. So first of all, I challenge that he's even a libertarian in the first place, even though I don't find libertarian to be oh, a reasonable I position. Wouldn't. There's uh, not really... I, how, how I'm not a libertarian... That? And I fight with libertarians all the time. Libertarians are the ones that put cannibalism in their platform one time because they care more about the concept of freedom than the actual applications of freedom. Um, It doesn't matter to me whether they're libertarian. If there's somebody who's, who's if they're, if they're saying I'm opposed to LGBT stuff, but I'm going to use a religion that I don't believe in to prop that up, they're arguing, arguing dishonestly from the get go. They don't think anything else about that religion is true. They're just using it as a scapegoat so they don't have to own the fact that they want to be bigoted. I'd get, I'd, I'd say, hey, you know, look, if, if, you're, if you don't like queer folk, um, just say that, you know? But if, you, if you're just going to cherry pick from a religion that you don't ascribe to uh, because it's convenient, okay, cool. Hey, you're an atheist. What's your reason for uh, opposing abortion? Oh, because I think it goes against God. Okay. I, I think I'd still spend some time on the hypocrisy of a, a concept of libertarianism with personal freedom, the idea that you are socially liberal but fiscally conservative and you're trying to minimize government, whatever. Again, I don't agree with – I'm a socialist. I couldn't be less libertarian. But I'd still be challenging on the point of hypocrisy. In what way can you say you advocate for personal freedom if you are anti-queer, if you are anti-trans? Uh, how – how is that libertarian of you? Because that is directly but at the end of the day with them. All you do in that case is get them to admit, okay, I'm not a libertarian, but they still have the shitty view that they had before. And all I care about is the shitty view that they have. I don't care whether they call themselves or think they're a libertarian or not. Um, it's like perfect Dawa uh, from earlier is a liberal Muslim that that disregards a lot of what Muslim scholars have to do by the way also he's very keen on getting somebody at, uh, multiple times during the debate he was like come watch me on my live stream after the yeah. debate come watch me on my live stream after the debate come watch i don't ever do that and yet these yeah. that's the other thing about the the muslim apologists in particular they want to ride people's coattails and they want to get in and get this it would i wouldn't have been long until he would have uh, advocated for somebody to come watch his stream which whatever but I, if I, you say you're anti-gay. I don't care if you say I'm a libertarian, I'm anti-gay. I'm not a libertarian, I'm anti-gay. It's no longer the libertarian portion that matters to me. Now, maybe getting, yeah. you know, if somebody's like hardcore, like I'm a libertarian and libertarians believe this, showing them that they're hypocritical, there's value in that. That's what I was going to say. I think there's a lot of value in forcing a person to address their, because I, I, I think uh, Hannah was the chatter. Hannah's asking about a person uh, in her personal life, not necessarily somebody, I'm not saying you're implying that this is the case for you, but we debate for a living in front of people. We're thinking about the audience. When I'm debating somebody one-on-one and I'm thinking about the person, I'm thinking about what I can make them take with them and is going to fester in their brain. I'm no longer doing it for an audience, but I know I'm not going to change their mind in the moment or, or, uh, whatever else. I know that to that end, it's but useless. And I think having a person confront their matter? hypocrisy is good. Wouldn't it only matter if they prioritize their libertarianism? I, yeah, I guess like you'd have you to sh- find that out. If you that show out. that somebody's in conflict, if you show that yeah. two positions somebody has in conflict, how do you know which one they're going to give up? I get it. I, I think when you're having them address their hypocrisy, someone who says they're a libertarian, having them acknowledge actually personal freedom doesn't matter to me uh, uh, as their hypocrisy. Yeah, I do. I, 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 I suspect that's going to be useful conceptually yeah. even if even if they're going to in the moment defensively just back off of the label i, think I would so. i would hope so yeah i just i tend to target as my priority the thing that is the problem um and maybe strategically if you knew someone cared more about i'm a libertarian and this is it maybe showing them the hypocrisy is the best way to get them to change their mind on that i just maybe i've run up against people who their primary bigotry that they're looking for a way to justify it. Like 
they're anti-gay Christian. And so they're going to point to the Bible and pointing out that they cherry pick from the Bible doesn't have any impact on whether or not they're anti-gay. It's never, yeah. in, in my experience, changed anybody's mind on that because they're going to prioritize, actually, they'll prioritize both of them and just uh, ignore the contradiction. <laughs> I'll probably end up pissing off the libertarian anyway, because as soon as I meet a libertarian, I tend to say something like, I get it. You've met, you've been able to accomplish some amount of self-satisfaction in life that you would now like to uh, set up a system which maintains the suffering of others so that your contentness isn't uh, threatened. Because that's my, that's yeah. my summary of libertarianism. Uh, fuck yeah. you. Most my, of you yeah, libertarians. My my summer summarization of libertarianism is fuck you or, yeah. as I got mine. Fuck you. If you can't get yours. Yeah. 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 But. Yeah. Similar. <laughs> uh, cool. Awesome. I got so, the yeah. next call reminder that super chats on the screen. Yep. Here we go. We've got carpe diem in Colorado wants to talk a little bit about moral obligation versus virtue. So welcome. Hi, it's a pleasure to speak with you guys. Um, so, Someone, someone wise once said that uh, within uh, secular morality, people have the right, if not the obligation, to make the system better, right? And I'm, I'm taking that from your um, superiority of secular morality uh, lecture. I watched it before calling you guys today because I wanted to have it fresh in my mind. I agree with you in almost everything you said in that um, debate. Uh, it's not a debate of that kind of lecture, particularly because it's not just about how it works, but why it's better. And I love that. Um, with that in mind, uh, I, I kind of want to parse this, this notion of the difference between the things that you should do and it'll be nice if you did it versus the things that like you, you expected to do this. This, this one you have to do, right? And how, I just want to hear from you guys, how do you draw that line? Uh, within the sexual morality hey carpe you subscribe to carpe what 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 was different about the beginning of your call to now that now it sounds like you've thrown the phone into a tunnel and it's raining what's going I don't on know, but i can try to change i can try to change something hold on yeah are we on speakerphone no you weren't but is this better this is much better yeah All right. great let's yeah. let's let's just start over carpe diem in colorado you are on the line what do you want to ask us <laughs> Okay, so I'm not going to repeat everything I just said, but... Uh, you should, because I, you I heard address. nothing. <laughs> but go ahead. Okay, okay. My bad, Jimmy. All right, so, so what, basically what I said is, is, is um, I just watched, uh, re-watched uh, uh, Matt's uh, Disappearity of uh, Second Molarity Lecture uh, because I wanted to have it fresh in my mind, and I absolutely love everything he said there, not just because he explains how it works, but because he also talks about why it's better, and I love that, and we're in agreement on all of that. Um, but something that he said there was it's the right, if not the obligation, and that, that key word there is going to be important for us, uh, of people within that system to make the system better, right, and to continue working to make that that's the case. And, and that's one of the first things he mentioned is, is, is better about secularity, and I agree. So with that in mind, I kind of want to parse the difference for you, uh, and I want to hear from you guys first uh, before, so I don't like misrepresent your current position, because, you know, that lecture was a long time ago. How do you parse the difference between what you have to do, what we, what we are expected to do, and what it's like, oh, that would be nice if you did that, right? So this notion of obligation versus virtue, how do you draw the line? How do you make decisions about whether you should versus you must, if that makes sense? So for me, I, well, let me, let me just, let me give an example because I can describe the difference between a moral duty and a moral virtue. Um, if there's a kid standing out in the middle of the road and there's a bus heading towards that kid, if I can save that kid with no risk to myself at all, then I think I have a moral obligation to do so. Other people might disagree but I would say that failing to act in that circumstance would put me on the wrong side of any moral valuation if there's no risk to me. If there is, in fact, risk to me, then whether or not I, I save that kid is a moral virtue because there's a potential risk to me that's non-trivial that changes that situation from if you fail to act, you are essentially a moral monster. You have contributed to that outcome by your failure to act. Whereas 
In the other circumstance, your failure to act had justification. And so for me, that, that's the method for to determining whether or not something is a moral duty or a moral virtue is if I fail to take the act, does a, an, an evaluation say that that was me contributing, like it wouldn't have cost me anything um, to do that. If I, if I donate to cancer research, that's a moral virtue. If I fail to donate to cancer research, does that mean I'm immoral? And what if I only donate $100 versus $1,000? So the process of identifying whether something's a moral duty or moral virtue, I don't know that I can, I can describe a, a rock solid process for any given scenario, but the primary factors are what are the, what's the risk to the individual um, for not taking the, or for taking the action that would justify not taking it. Um, if, for example, that same kid gets hit by a bus, and I could have rescued the kid with no risk to me, but I didn't know, or I didn't notice, or I was on my phone and distracted and I didn't see it, um, then clearly I haven't you know, done anything immoral. It has to be a conscious decision on my part to either act or not act, and then an evaluation of the consequences of that action with respect to the risk for me. And there's going to be some incredibly muddy, murky things because what if there's probably no risk to me? Like what if I, there's probably time for me to help that kid avoid the bus, but I'm not sure, or my brain freezes and I'm like, oh my God, what do I do until all of a sudden there's not enough time? Was that immoral? Uh, no, because what we're evaluating is the motivation. And if the motivation is such that there was no risk to me, I was aware of it, I could have taken action and opted not to take action, then I would be morally, I would be violating a moral duty. And that's probably, I, I realize that's not like a, 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 a method or how-to guide to really tell the difference between the two of them, because it's just so situational. Can I, can I, can I, uh, uh, respond to some of the, what you said there. I want to, uh, sure. and I want to hear from Jimmy if that's possible too. But just it, it'd be, it'd be sure. a lot if he goes next. Uh, so Matt, I I feel like first of all, I just want to say like I respect your opinion, and I feel like that lecture was so well put together. I wish that you had something similar uh, for this question, and this is why I called because I keep waiting for someone to to do it. Uh, and I get, I guess, perhaps what I'm hearing from you saying is that the reason why it's no not easy to put that on paper or in a clear cut method is because it's so murky and situational, right? So perhaps there's some value there. Um, when, uh, when Harris created his like moral landscape idea, and I like, I don't like, I don't like there's several things about the book that I don't like, but what I like about this idea of traveling towards a peak, right? And that even if you are in a peak, there might be a, a higher peak that might require you to go down a hill to get up the hill again. I like the visualization to kind of talk about how to get to a better place. Because what I'm coming from here is like, how do we improve this secular system, right? And so if I want to improve the secular system, I don't want to be couched on this, oh, you're right, but that's just a virtue. So I'm not going to go do that there. So I don't want to sit there waiting for the virtue to become an obligation for me to improve the system. And so I what to make sure that I'm not comfortable, I would obligation. love to see. What well, makes you think point. a that's virtue is? Like, no, not necessarily. I, I'm not saying that that's the case. What I'm trying to say well, is like, no, no, I don't want to be couched. I, right? I know you haven't gotten to your point yet, but there's a lot of sloppiness in what you're saying right now because you're like, oh, I don't want to wait around for the, for, the, uh, for the virtue to become an obligation. And I don't see any indication that, that a virtue necessarily is ever going to become an obligation. Um, so no, if yeah, you're sitting around agree, waiting for that, that's, that's, but also the thing that you list as, 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 as a virtue you're like, oh, that's a good thing. I don't want to wait for it to become an obligation. Okay, are you going to start mandating that people donate a certain portion of their income to cancer research? Because that's the only other option for that particular virtue. Right, so that's, that's, that's where it gets interesting. And, and I guess uh, I agree with you that my language was, was, was sloppy. Uh, uh, would you agree with me that as, as we continue to reflect on what's good and what's bad and 
how should we improve our moral systems? We often look back and say, like, yeah, at the time, nobody thought that that was an obligation, but now we expect that of people. And, you know, so like it's a presentism kind of thing where you look back and you say, like, no, they should have thought that this is an obligation. They were Carpe, wrong. Right? Can we just get to what you think we're not doing that we're supposed to be doing? Well, uh, honestly, the, the reason I'm, I'm calling is because truthfully, I want your wisdom. I, my suggestion, I have, I have ideas, but I, I, I don't know how to parse the difference between a moral virtue and an obligation in a way that's very clear. Based on this idea that if, the things, if my goal is some sort of utilitarian reduction of suffering or you know, increasing well-being, um, maybe there's some deontology of like looking at uh, some rights, but I would say that those rights are rights because I want to reduce suffering, whatever. I think Matt would agree there, if I understand him correctly. But I think my point is basically this. If I always want to make the world a better place, and I know that taking this step is going uphill, why shouldn't I take that step? Why is it just a virtue? If it's going to make the world better, why shouldn't I do it? Because there's risk to you. Because there's a cost to you. And how do you compute how much personal cost... Uh, how much personal autonomy is more valuable than going up the hill? Where did autonomy enter this? Well, I'm just saying, like, whatever the value your, is. That, carpe diem, how much of your income are you currently donating to cancer research, and what percentage of your income should you be donating to cancer research? Uh, well, I have cancer, but <laughs> so that's a separate story. But um, that's not I, know, I, I don't currently have income. Okay, you know, so you don't have any income. When you, have you ever had income? Yeah, I was a teacher for, for many years. I recently stopped sure. teaching because of my When health. you had income, what percentage of your income did you donate to cancer research? So the way, the way I, I went, like I said, I have ideas. The way I go about it is something similar to what you, I heard you say before. I will prioritize by empathy those which are closest to my circle and then expand that empathy uh, slowly uh, and, and, you know, through discussion and, and you know, little That's by little trying to make the decisions question. about how can I more... Well, I, I'm trying to answer your question. I promise. So No, you're not. In the past... No, no, no. In the past, I did no, not no, donate did not. money to cancer research. Okay, hold on. I did not donate money to cancer research because I had other yeah. causes that were closer well, to my circle. It's not an answer. Okay, stop. Stop answering questions I didn't fucking ask. Okay. I, I said I I'm leading to the point to research. answer your question and address your concern. In the past, what sure. percentage of your income did you donate to cancer research? Uh, none. What percentage do you think you should have donated to cancer research? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. That's the point. You were trying to address how we get to these things are virtuous. These would make a better world. How does one determine how much one puts towards cancer research? And by the way, if we're putting money towards cancer research, how much should we put towards pancreatic cancer versus how much we should put towards testicular cancer? And how much of that money would have been better spent going to breast cancer? How much of it would have been better going to something like diabetes research? How much of it would have gone to something like this? These are questions yeah. that you cannot yeah. fucking answer. That's the point. You called in and you went through your, your diatribe on, I really would like for us to get to a point where we're doing good, where the things that we would normally label as morally virtuous feel more like moral duties to us. And that's understandable, but there is no answer to your question. That was why I was asking those questions. It is up to the individual to determine how they're going to disperse their income and their, all of their resources and what they're going to spend it on. Now, I'm genuinely sorry that you're currently without income and cancer. I wasn't trying to be an, an, an of cancer. I'm not trying to be glib <laughs> no, about that good, at man. all. I'm just no, saying you're good. that you're good. if we're trying to figure out how to tell the difference between a moral duty and a moral virtue, a good chunk of it is if somebody said, hey, your mom just failed to donate to cancer research, would you go, God, she's awful? If your mom failed to, stunt, to help a kid that was getting ready to hit by a bus when she could have, you have a different evaluation of that, don't you? Yes. I, uh, and I guess, I guess um, I'll, I'll think about, I'll re-listen to the call and I'll think about um, how to phrase my question better. Perhaps I'll call back and think about it. 
And I, like I said, I, I would love to hear from Jamie too. Uh, the best question I can ask right now is basically this, right? We all are limited in our, in our resources or time, right? And yep. how much we spend on what, for me, the, 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 and I think you've heard, I heard you say something similar before, it has to do with a circle of empathy, right? Like I will invest more on the things which are closer to me uh, and then expand yep. that carefully and after discussion to try to make decisions about how to best spend my limited time. But I wonder if there isn't a process similar to the one you've described to decide what's, what's just and what's not just in terms of increasing well-being that we can apply here to parse those decisions. So as a skeptic, I'm trying to decide, is there a process that we can engage in to go up those hills uh, little by little as a society? And how do we decide which hills to prioritize? And how does that process look like? Should we be having a conversation? That's kind of what I'm getting at. Does that make sense? It sounds to me like you're looking for an absolute and objective moral solution to every moral question. Congratulations. Yeah, I, I mean, it just sounds like you're looking for an objective process because you see us not doing something that we're actually doing. I agree that we should have less barriers in the way, but all of society and government and politics and all of this is an attempt at what you're doing is to say, hey, so-and-so has identified this problem. Let's talk about how we solve it. And then you get the people out there who deny that that problem even exists, even when it hits you over the head. They're called Republicans. Uh, and then you get everybody else <laughs> who's who's coming in and and trying to do it. And as a society, you do your best with, okay, here's the impacts, here's the studies, here's the thing that we used to think this didn't matter at all, and now we've just realized it has a huge impact on society because of, of different studies and science. But there's no, there's no uh, uh, right now, with so many, we don't even know the impact of many of our day-to-day -day things. We don't think about when you order something on Amazon, how much more unpleasant you made somebody's life because you asked to have it next day. We don't think about those little things. You didn't think about how you're contributing to climate change by participating in electricity uh, uh, demanding things when you called this show. We don't think about that stuff. Uh, it's just we we go about living our lives and with anything that doesn't uh, present itself is obviously a problem. We just tend to ignore until somebody raises our consciousness about it. So you're asking for an objective system, even if we came in and go, here's the perfect objective system to evaluate. We don't even know what things to put into that system. We know some, yeah, but we okay. don't know which things so, definitely so, need to be. So, so what I'm hearing from you, Jamie, is that you say, like we're, we're, our, our, our wisdom is limited by our intelligence here. We don't have a lot of information to even compute the decision, even if we had such a system. And I kind of agree with that. And the democratic process ends up pulling us in different directions, perhaps not the best direction, right? So maybe, maybe climate change is the thing we should all be pouring our know, thing to before we all die. Who knows? I get what you guys are coming from. Um, I, just, I guess, yes, I, I am looking for some sort of objective way to assess when it's time to turn a virtue into an obligation, right? Uh, and there's lots yeah. of examples we could talk about, you know? What's your number one example? Well, climate change is a great one, right? So should, okay. you know, should, how much more effort should we put into that, for gonna, example? Here's, here's, here's why I asked Carpe. Uh, one, I don't actually have much interest in, in the call much longer because it's all, it's all hypothetical stuff. If this was never going to come up, truly I would have lost a bet based on looking at the notes and everything. I have been waiting for you to turn this into veganism the whole time and have been so surprised you haven't. Uh, and so good on you for that if that wasn't the intention of your call. Uh, but is there any other remaining question or something we can briefly answer and then and then move on with the show? No, I think, I, I think, I think yeah, I, I, would, I, I would rather you guys do the amazing work you just did with Danny. So I'll, I cool. think I'll think about it and how I can ask questions better and call you guys back when it's not a Sunday show. Uh, and then uh, pick, pick a brain again about when I have better questions. But I appreciate what? Uh, what I learned from you guys today. Thank you. One question to ask yourself, what in the world would ever turn a virtue into an obligation. Because on two separate occasions here, you've suggested that virtues should turn into an obligation. And I'm not convinced that all or any of them should ever change from being a virtue to being an obligation. Um, I love that question. And, and I guess my, again, I'll say there was sloppiness of language. What I'm more saying is perhaps we are wrong about this thing only being a virtue. It perhaps should be an obligation. How do we parse that difference? Uh, and perhaps there's no such difference between virtue and obligation. Perhaps it's all going towards the peaks. And how do we decide well, when it's clearly time to there, take the next no, step? No, there is a difference between a virtue and an obligation. I would say that the peaks 
Uh, well, all right, never mind. We're not going down that road now. But um, yeah, we'll cool. talk to you next time, Carpe. Thanks. Yeah, I'll, I'll think about it. Think about better questions and call back. Thanks, you guys, for your for your for your wisdom. I appreciate it. Thank Thanks. you so much. Let me let me make one whiny ass point for me. Okay. This is not for Jimmy. This is for callers. I genuinely don't give a shit. If you're an atheist or a theist, I don't care if you think you're on my side or not on my side. I will let you go make absolutely ridiculous points. But if I ask a question, answer the question that I asked. Don't answer the question you think that I asked or you suspect that I'm leading to. Otherwise, there's no reason for you to call in and get my thoughts on something. If you already know where I'm going, why the fuck are you wasting all of our time? You will never, ever, ever win this fight. Just answer the question, and then when, I'm, when I get that answer, boom, you get to go on to, to something else. I'm doing this because I'm either trying to lead towards a spe specific understanding, or I'm trying to get clarity on what you're saying. Because if, if we're having a conversation, and all I've said is, what percentage of your income did you donate to, to X before. Maybe you know where I'm going. Cool. Maybe I know where I'm going. I may not. But if I've got a question, I've got something intended. And so if you answer the different question, I'm just going to keep asking it over and over. It's just going to be annoying. Anyway, that was my, my super whiny bit. Yeah. No, it's all good. I didn't find it whiny, but I also only half listened because I was doing some production stuff. That's uh, fair. You already did what I was going to suggest. Awesome. Let's do it. Sweet. Mike in Florida is a theist. Pronouns are he, him. Um, or it's, it's listed as a theist, but not sure if he's a theist or an atheist. But anyway, uh, what do you got for us, Mike? How can we help? Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm... I don't really... I don't know. I, I have a similar background as, uh, as, as Matt. Like, I grew up in the church and then deconverted. But um, I guess the, the question... Because I think the the prompt I got on the notification was, "Does God exist?" The, the question I have for you guys is is what about God and uh, the concept of like a the highest ideal, not necessarily an, an an individual or something with agency. Okay, so are, we're, let me make sure we're understanding correctly. We're talking about the possibility of a God that isn't an agent but represents a a highest ideal, like. Yeah. The most intelligent? Well, no, that would be agency. So, um, the greatest good? Sure, sure. So, something like that. Like, and, and, and if, like, for. What, uh, what use is, what maybe, use is it? Uh, so, sim I guess, like in Buddhist traditions, like where they, they, they bow to one another and, and really they, they share this idea of like the, the, the God in me bows to the God in you, but they're not really, I don't think they're saying that there's a, agent you know god in me controlling me um but there is this potential of the highest good or, or the most good in me and that the also potential is in you and i want to kind of yeah but recognize that I, in I, you. the question was what use is that the the use of that belief yes the, well it's only a concept so the greatest the highest yeah. good isn't an agent and so what you're describing is Somebody saying the concept of the highest good in me bows to the concept of the highest good in you. Okay, what did we accomplish? Uh, yeah, I think the, the good in that is, or, or the, the benefit in that is, is simply um, maybe recognizing, just showing, showing general respect. I think it's more humanistic, you know, more, more are we, humanism. Are we incapable of showing general respect without appealing to some sort of highest concept yeah that's, hmm, i don't know i, don't I mean know when i meet somebody for the first time i tend to smile say hello it's nice to meet you shake hand how is that different than saying oh i'm gonna bow because i have a concept of the highest good yeah i'm not i'm not uh advocating for the bowing aspect just the recognition um that that each person has that potential. And, and so I mean, uh, if somebody, well, if you get uh, rid of the bowing aspect, then you have two people meeting 
yeah. not doing anything, but possibly sharing some concept that maybe there's a highest good. Yeah, I, I think I'm. Uh, I'm trying to say that we treat people with that respect, that, that as if this concept of God exists, or like as an as an archon. You know that this person represents uh, something with creative power, something that has the, cap- the capacity to do great good, um, or and and even just destroy, like as in as in seen by by most mythologies and most gods. Uh, and so it's just kind of treating the human person with that respect. Uh, it reminds me you, of it reminds me of the the positions where you you tell kids that Santa Claus is watching everything they do so that they behave when you're not around. And so now you've got a concept which isn't real, and you're using that as a tool to get better behavior out of people. How is that different from what you're describing? Uh, well, you have a separate agent in, in the form of Santa Claus, right? And sure. you have evidence that this person that you're talking to is talking to you, right? Uh, and, and I think mainly I'm, I'm really, I don't know. But uh, well, would you create the concept of evidence. the Santa within you? Mike, oh, sorry, I missed that, Jimmy. What was it? Would you create then the concept yeah. of the Santa within you when you tell the children the truth about Santa? Do you then start telling them about, but let's talk about the Santa within you. Let's talk about the Santa that is, you know, as a concept exists. Mike, I think I think the reason why I get tired of these calls is it sounds to me like people who are going, hey, we exist in a society where lots of people believe in God and they don't find it palatable to suggest there is no God. But maybe they would find it palatable if we gave them some soft concept of God and go, we're going to still use your language and we're not going to treat you like intelligent humans and just tell you, no, there's no good reason to believe in God. And we want to bring them over and conceptually present them with something that's more palatable because we're not just telling them they're wrong because people don't, you know, that's mean to tell people they're wrong. Why do we need to wrap it up in the concept of God, the concept of you should respect other people when secular humanism can already account for it without invoking God? What specifically is your motivation to hold on to this term God that's that's jumping in there, and why wouldn't you just do that with every concept, like the Santa within you? I'm bowing to the Santa within you. What's why? What is your motivation for holding it to God specifically? Oh, I'm not. What do you mean you're not? That's your whole call. What are you talking about? You're not. No, I, I personally am not. I was asking about like if you guys found any benefit in that. Okay, good. Then like, no, I, I'm, zero benefit. Yeah. 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 In fact, I would say short term losses by trying to say, uh, let's soften your, let's treat you like you're too stupid to just take on the concept that there may not be a God and let's soften it. Cause that's what I think is, is the effect of what you're describing. I think if there's no reason to invoke a God, creating new definitions by which, uh, uh, you can now say God, it, it's just equivocation for the sake of people's ego. And I, I see no benefit, Matt, sorry if, if I, spoke over you. I mean, I'm confused that it it seems that now you're suggesting that your point was what my point was, which one of the the first question I asked is like, what's, what's the benefit of this? What do we get out of it? Um, yeah, and I think, I think the benefit is, is trying to, to to kind of bridge that gap and it is, and unless, uh, and I think Jimmy nailed it. Like it's less of a, um, tell him theist, you know, Hey, you're wrong. Um, but we're going to, we're going to use the term God. And I, and I, I don't know, I'm going to push back a little bit on that. on on part of that, Jimmy, about the appropriation of the term, uh, because like gods are, I think people know different histories of, of mythologies and, and pantheons of gods, like that they were anthropomorphized, right? We have these, these agents that, that are sculpted in the image of man and they have attributes of, of, you know, men that, uh, espouse great ideals right and and those then became archetypes for things and so so i mean I, I think i think we're in agreement that man makes gods in man's image but really what that what they're doing is this highest ideal right they're trying to put forth that this is the this highest ideal uh for, for whatever it may be and, and maybe we need to try to work towards that and, and so i don't know 
if, if it can be helpful in bridging the gap between dogmatic religious theists and saying, hey, we can still do that without having to have the religion part of it. You can still espouse, you know, love your neighbor and, you know, don't murder and don't engage in slavery and, and don't be a bigot. But that's you know? what we're doing. No, no, no. See, that's, that's what secular humanism is doing, is saying those things which are demonstrably good for us as human beings, we can advocate for and should advocate for because they are demonstrably good, not because they are tied to a religion or tied to a god. I don't need to appeal to the god in someone, real or metaphorical, in order to uh, identify that they're a human being and value and grant them autonomy and rights and, and value them as a person. And it's, it, it's a little, not, not saying this is you, Mike, it is a little condescending to say, well, I don't need the God concept anymore, but there are some people out there who really do. And you may, no, I know you're not saying this, whoever says that may be correct. There are probably some individuals out there who will never behave appropriately and never value their fellow human if they don't have some sort of God concept. It's just that I believe that that portion of the population is probably pretty small, and I have no way of telling who they are. And I'd rather teach those people that they can value and can show respect and can uh, protect other people's rights and can cooperate um, with other human beings without having to appeal to Santa Claus or tooth fairies or gods, real or metaphorical. The, the mere fact that we are here and we know from science, even I can be a completely misanthropic individual who despises other human beings. And still the fact remains that we know from game theory that I am better off cooperating, that the quality of my life in almost every regard improves if I treat people with respect, if I grant them their rights, if I um, work together to make things better. And so um, instead of doing what I find some people do condescendingly, which is I don't need God, but maybe those people do, I'm operating on the assumption I don't need God and I'm not anybody special. And if I don't need a God, neither do the rest of them. Yeah. They just haven't realized it yet. So why don't I just share what I've learned? Yeah, I'd even I'd even just add to that everything Matt just said, but I'd add on top of it. Um additionally, if we decided we needed to as a society go, let's come up with some concept or a term for the greatest ideal. I would personally be opposed to now using the term God with the context added of how that's played out through human history and to pick a concept that actually has turned into, you know, things like genocide and shit, uh, to use that term to describe now what we would call as an ideal, even if we are saying it's going to be a secular term, you know, now that we're getting past it, let's still call the ideal the God ideal or whatever, I, I would actually then have a personal point to make about what a terrible word to represent the greatest ideal when society has fucked up that concept in the name of God so many times. I can't yeah, think I, of many words that. I'd hate to be there less. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. I'm just, I'm, I'm you know, de deconverted and, and just have sure. been in this space without having, uh, community to talk about things with people, you know, and, sure. and it's like, I hear, I hear these concepts and like, I think Peterson throws this, Jordan Peterson throws out this thing about this highest ideal. I'm like, what, like, why is he using that? Oh my using God. That to, to, yeah. Don't, you, you don't got to worry about that. It's if there's Peterson. no yeah. other piece of advice you ever take from me, stop listening to Jordan Peterson. He's a fucking lunatic. <laughs> He's a fraud. <laughs> uh, so I, I had a different, I mean, it's similar line, uh, but I just want your, I mean, I, I think that the, the, the line of thought goes parallel to what we're talking about. Do you, do you guys find anything because I know I've heard Matt say, uh, and, I, and I agree with you, Matt, like that I would like to, to believe as many true things as possible and as little false things as possible. So, but if there's something that we can't either, um, we haven't figured out a good way to, to falsify uh, or, you know, or validate or verify, like, do you find benefit? I'll, get, I'll give a specific thing that I'm thinking about. It's... Uh, people say, you know, you, don't, you didn't choose to be born, right? You didn't choose to be born. And um, I think that's... And you, I know you're going to... 
just yeah, just get to it, Mike. Just get it out. Just get it out, bud. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you're good. So, so there's that. You, you didn't you didn't choose to be born, but I don't know if we can definitively say that you didn't choose to be born, um, or maybe you did choose to be born. So if we can't really prove one way or the other, I think if we say, well, what if, for the sake Wait. of argument, we say that you did choose to be born? I know, Matt. <laughs> I'm, I, I get the hypothetical. Keep going. Keep going. Just, just so that, just so that it's more empowering of a life instead of being a victim of genetics or victim of circumstance or victim of your mom and dad wanting to, to get it on. You know. This took a weird turn because I can't imagine how it how it could be possible that I chose to be born. This is all a video I have, game. I have no memory yeah, of yeah, it. Vi yeah, video game. I, yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter. I, I don't have, how, how, if I chose to be born and chose to have no memory of it, my situation is functionally identical to, to not choosing to be born. And so it's, it's a non-starter. Yeah. Yeah. The Instead conclusion of, is the same. Yeah. I was just saying the conclusion is the same, Mike, even if that's somehow the case and we die and we take off our VR goggles and go, Oh, right. I forgot. This is where I was, what I was doing. It, functionally as, it, as we are experiencing now, we have no good reason to believe that will happen. Just like religion. Yeah, this is, this is, there's no solution to the problem of hard solipsism. And so if it turns out that I've been deceived by a new evil demon, or yeah. if I'm a brain in a vat, or if I take off my VR goggles, there's absolutely nothing I could do about it. But does anybody think that it's wise to live this one and only life that we know we have yeah. as if it's a, a VR. Anybody yeah, no, who says it's wise to live your life that way is stupid as fuck. Mormonism. <laughs> kind of. It's not literal like, goggles, but remember... We picked our families before we came here. We sort of chose where we were going to exist. Right. Oh, yeah, it's, that's it's criminal insane. levels of like if you right. manage to convince someone, if you said, if you manage to just like indoctrinate the shit out of your kid and convince them nothing that you experience is real. This is all a simulation. And when you die, okay. you will take off your VR goggles and get on to the real life. If you manage to convince your kid of that to the point where they walked out in traffic in order to end this, you would be a moral monster. Yeah, yeah I agree. Well, you I just mean, have I to just, add that there's a big penalty if you uh, walk out into traffic to end the game. That, that you know, now you're, you're the penalized. Catholic Church where, where say, suicide is, is a mortal sin. This is Mormonism. You we literally, yeah. it's like you got ready for the video game, then you put on your body, which is the gaming controller, and then yeah. you're gonna die. You'll turn. You'll take off your body. You'll go do some spirit stuff, and then as a reward, if you do everything right, you'll get your body back, but with new powers. That's Mormonism in a nutshell, people. Uh, so it's kind of crazy. Cool. Mike, I'm going to do one last thing with you and then let you go. Mike, do you believe actively that there is a God which exists? No. no You're an atheist. That was the beginning of your call. <laughs> we're just going to, we're going to, we're going to give you that correction. Now you understand you're open to it. You've got concepts of maybe deism, but you're, uh, uh, if you don't hold the belief, in, in the way in which Matt and I, and, and I imagine most people in the audience watching, use the term, you are an atheist. Okay. Yep. Cool. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still open at, to it. At know? least like, in I our think, eyes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm still open to, like, having evidence. I'm still open to, like, these, these crazy coincidences that happen. Like, uh, you know, you're thinking about somebody and then they call you out of the blue, right? That there's some kind of other deeper connection, some kind of woo going on. Wow, that, that's, that there's that's maybe... not... Yeah, so you're not yeah, a skeptic, I, I, but you are an thing. atheist. <laughs> That's that's literally okay. not a thing. Because what you then need to do is say, how many other times have I thought about a person and they didn't call? Yeah. You only remember the times when you thought about a person and they called because that feels significant. You don't remember every time that you thought about them and they didn't call. It's, it's literally the sharpshooter fallacy in action. If I made up an imaginary person and they called, that would impress me. But somebody from my life who has my number calling me in a coincidental time, zero impress. I mean, I'm going to go, wow, what a coincidence. And that's the extent of my, how impressed I am. But Mike, that's uh, yeah. maybe a, a, a topic for another day if you want. We can explore it now sure. if you like, but maybe not. 
that, I mean, it's up to you. Like I, I, so I, I mean, I, I have brain damage and, and uh, like long term memory loss, and and so like I get phone calls from people that I don't I don't know who they are. My my phone does. I'll ask my wife like, hey, who's Jeff? And she'll she'll have to tell me. But then uh, there are times when I have access to, to memories, and, and I'm like, oh, wonder wonder how Jeff's doing, and and then Jeff calls. Like it's so. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. Like that, um, you don't really take stock of of the the times you're thinking about somebody and they don't call, but it, I, I don't know. I, th- I think the, the, there's even other stuff, Mike, I've, I've discovered this when I've explored this concept with other people, but especially when I've thought about it in my own life, when you sit back and you go, and I don't know, I don't know if it's affecting your short term at all. So, you know, I'm not going to hypothesize about the brain damage you're talking about, but when you sit back and go, man, I was ta- I was thinking about Jeff and then Jeff called and you also ignore, as you're retelling that story, rethinking about that story, the other things that were happening in your life that actually caused you to think about Jeff in the first place. So often in these stories, it turns out, if you really think about it, the thinking about Jeff wasn't all that spontaneous. And whatever didn't make it spontaneous, the 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 chain of events you know, pivoted around you and also made his calling you not that spontaneous. Uh, not only uh, are perfect coincidences possible, sure, perfect coincidences are possible. But I find that the more you investigate things that you think are a perfect coincidence, the less they are. Uh, uh, often, it, that is often the case too. So yeah, the confirmation bias unfortunately works in a few different ways in this scenario yeah. and the way in which we then filter it down to seeming the closest to a perfect coincidence. Yeah. What do you guys have anything on the? Um, I know you touched it a little bit. The the uh, like this is AI. This is like artificially uh, generated reality. Like the probability of that based on how AI is developing and and video game rendering and all that's becoming more advanced. Have we ever idea. demonstrated that it's possible to simulate a universe? I don't know. No, we haven't. And until we do, I have no reason to believe that it's possible we're in one either. Same I don't, thing I don't even know how you could begin to calculate the likelihood that the universe that you're currently experiencing is a generated one in yeah. AI. Yeah. But. but we don't we don't even have a demonstration of the possibility, much like God. And that's one of the things that I, I sit behind is I've I, I haven't even seen God be demonstrated as possible. I have zero reason to believe that that's the case. And same thing with I actually used to say, like, yeah, I'm pretty seduced by simulation theory. It seems to me very unlikely that uh uh, that we are in base reality, but repeating an old Elon Musk line. And now I'm like, actually, right. I don't know that that's the case. And I'm really just speaking out of my ass and saying words with key phrases if I say something like that. Uh, but even if you find it compelling, I mean, even if you find it compelling, this is an untestable, unfalsifiable proposition. And yeah. considering that the testable, falsifiable propositions that we know of, for example, the impacts of climate change, um, I don't know how anybody can sit around and spend any significant amount of time entertaining these bong hit speculations about whether or not we're in a simulation when the world that we're currently living in um, has a problem with violence, has a problem with corruption, has a problem with diseases, has a problem with climate change, has a problem with inequality and rights. I mean, I love my video games and my shows and my time away, but when it comes time to actually think about the real world, I don't need fantasy injected in it because there's a big steaming pile of shit we've got to correct before we all die. Yeah. That's what the evidence yeah, I, points I agree. to. Yep. Yeah. Cool, Mike. You good? Right. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thanks for awesome. calling in. Uh, if you want to pick a call, I'll put you on the screen and 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 put the banner up for them. I uh, I'm gonna go switch to my other glasses. These ones are these ones are really bugging me. They squeeze okay. the back right behind my ears in a way that gives me a headache. Those look very much like what we used to call BC glasses in the Navy. The other pair are very similar. They're just bigger. They're just physically bigger. I think they're in my car, so it'll take me a minute to cool. get them. Knock it out. I'll just I'll take. Who's who's been on the longest? Elena in Virginia. Pronouns is she her. Welcome, Elena. How are you? How can we help? Maybe Elena has been on hold for so long that she fell asleep. Or muted the phone with her face. Elena! I tried yelling. 
Do I'm gonna her- I'm gonna put her back in the queue. Yeah. We'll see. Maybe we did that. In this case, we'll go with Arlindo uh, from the UK. How's so, welcome, Arlindo. How are you? Hi, hi, Matt. Hi, Jimmy. Hello. Oh, I've I've been on the line waiting for so long. Uh, basically, I've got a question for you guys, and and I would like you to answer it with your Christian hats on, and also go back in time and and try and um, answer it. But imagine that your your younger believing selves. Can, can you do that? I'll be right back, so I may have to hear it restated again when I get back, but I'm stepping away for a minute. But you have Matt. And, and my answer okay, is yeah. almost certainly no. What I can do is pretend and try to come as close as I can, but I can't think the way I used to think anymore, and I don't even understand how I used oh, to think, okay. but I will do my best to try. Okay. All right. Uh, basically, what would you have thought uh, as believers if an atheist said, I don't know what it would take to convince me that God exists. Um, you know, and, and I'm basing it on something that happened to me, um, you know, years ago when I, when I used to work as a bookie for Bedford. On my way to work, I was approached by um, two Mormon missionaries and they asked me if I believe in God and I said no. And they said, oh, uh, what would it take to convince you? One of them even said, you know, if, um, if Jesus appeared in the sky and descended on a cloud, would you believe? And I said, no, because I, I'd probably think I'm hallucinating. And at the time, because I was watching uh, Childhood Zen by Arthur C. Clarke, the series, I, I, I thought of an example and I said to them, look, even if everybody on earth watched the stars in the sky move to spell out the name of God, I would still be inclined to believe that aliens were pranking humans from space, as far-fetched as it sounds. So yeah, I don't, that's the I don't know that I'm asking I would, that question. Because, yeah, yeah, I don't know that I would be inclined to think that that was the answer. What what I the position I'd be in is I don't know how to tell the difference between aliens doing it and God doing it. And so until yeah. there's a way to tell the difference, you know, like somebody says, "Oh, if you saw Jesus, yeah. you know, well, if I saw Jesus, am I allowed to talk to him? How do I know it's Jesus?" It, there's the 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 examples are so horribly flawed. Like earlier when Perfect Dawa asked about splitting the moon into um you know you you you, you ask a flawed question um i have follow-up questions because most people are incredibly sloppy about thinking about epistemology and they're like if this if we were all standing here and all of us saw the stars merge to spell out the name of god wouldn't that convince you and my answer is first of all what's the name of god how do we know what we're seeing um I appreciate the fact that we're all witnessing it and there's independent verification. But at the end of the day, all I could say is I witnessed the stars doing this. I can't tell you why or yeah, how. Yeah. And That's so right. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when right. I was I think at the time when I was a believer. I was, I was let, I was let go. Yeah, yeah, go on. Yeah. When I was a believer, um, I wasn't particularly active in apologetics and didn't interact with a atheist very often i would you know i would meet unbelievers in uh witnessing you know in monday night visitation and stuff but that was pretty rare usually it was believers who had visited the church and so all i can do is say that when if i'd asked an atheist what would convince you that god exists if they gave my current answer i would have said oh i'll have to think about that i guess because clearly that's the answer that convinced me so when i was a believer yeah i would have probably gotten to stop believing a little quicker it's answers like that that helped me get from being a believer to not being a believer and so when when we talk about let's put on my christian hat um i don't have there is no counter there is no response to that there's nothing i i would probably thought oh that's really sad that this person yeah. um, is so deceived by Satan that they can't see the obvious truth in front of them. That might be about as close as I can get to pretending uh, to think the way I used to think. It's, it's funny you say that because when I gave my uh, aliens example, you know, because I was running late, I even told them, look, I'm running late for work. Uh, when I said that, I was met with an awkward silence, and then one of them said, oh, can we pray for you, Arlindo? And I said, well, you can wish me well, but make it quick because I'm running late for work. But it's funny you say that because it's, 
seems like that's probably what they were thinking about me at the time. You know, I'm I'm so deceived by Satan or something along those lines. Um, that's that's but at yeah, least I, biblical. I meant to convey to them. That's what's already biblical. Yeah. God's yeah, given yeah. you over to a reprobate mind. Your soul is a battleground. The you know the devil's doing everything he can to deceive you to keep you away from God. You know. That's right. Um, I tell you what. I don't know if I've got time for another question, and then I'll go. Is it possible to ask you another question? It's about go for it. Jordan Peterson. Okay. Well, that's going to be annoying um, as fuck. But go for it. Yeah, I know. I know he's your favorite person. <laughs> um, if. If Jordan Peterson could persuade all the Christians to buy into his uh, Jungian exegesis, uh, would he improve Christianity as a whole? Because I know I don't he's got his biblical so. studies. And... Okay. I don't think so. Every all time, right. every time Peterson branches out from religion to talk about um, issues, I find that yeah. his view is not only uh, repugnant but stupid right so like he, he sticks to these traditional roles of men and women and how the world would be better if yeah. we stuck to what he views as traditional roles and so if he if he converted every christian to his version of non-christian christianity or whatever else um he would make some of it better i mean he would probably make the westboro baptist church and the people who deny evolution potentially better but he would make some of them worse. Yeah. Like, for example, the yeah. the gay-friendly churches that don't have a, a biblical leg to stand on, if they were to, to be like Jordan Peterson, they would be more right-wing, more anti-LGBT. Yeah, and, and not just that that's the only issue. Um, he's, problem, yeah. Yeah. he's right of center on so many things. Uh, and so, yeah, he wouldn't... It wouldn't make the world better from my perspective, for sure. Right, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. I don't know if you, before I go, I don't know if, you've, um, if you're aware of Alex uh, O'Connor's uh, deconstruction of uh, Jordan Peterson. And basically, there's a clip that he plays where Jordan Peterson, you know, in his word salad, he ends up uh, slipping and saying that God is the ultimate uh, fictional character. And he sat next to John Paggio, and even John Paggio chuckles under his breath, as if to say, Jordan, what are you doing? You've, you've just given the game away. Because he, he's very um, ambiguous when some, whenever someone asks him, do you believe in God or not? And I know that he's, uh, he's picked on um, you and I think Sam Harris before uh, for, for being atheists, for not believing, for, for disbelieving in God. And, and he always says, oh, you're not really atheists, you're... You're really, uh, you really believe in God because you have a hierarchy of values. And if you follow what sits at the top of that hierarchy, then you're a God believer. And uh, it's funny that recently he said, oh, um, God is the ultimate fictional character. I think he was going on about fiction having a kernel of truth, um, you know, and, and tying to reality somehow. And then he just slipped and, and he, you know, and he said that. So, any thoughts about that? I, I don't know if you're if you uh, if you're aware of that, but if you run into him, you might be able to say, "Well, Jordan Peterson, you um, you really believe in you really you're really an atheist." In fact, he's probably a strong atheist, uh, Lindo, and that requires the burden of proof. Sorry yeah, if yeah. you already covered this. You know, oh, you know, Matt debated Jordan, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay. remember. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say a lot of this. Yeah, a lot of this sort of came up during that. There's pretty much no chance that I'll run into yeah. him again since he said that he would be willing to have another discussion and then he ran down and hid in his dressing room and hadn't spoken to me since. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think Jordan Peterson is oh, the is highest <laughs> example of what we were describing earlier with a caller who was kind of scratching the possibility. I think Jordan, yeah. uh, this is a bit speculative, but I think he reckons that most of society is too stupid to exist without his guidance yeah. and guidance like his and probably would defend the idea of, Oh, even if a religion isn't true, what we, the good, what, what we good do we get out of the God? I, I, that's, that's my impression of him. Oh, by the yeah. way, I'm sorry. I missed the last call. Cause I was talking to my nephew and he's, uh, he's probably watching the show right now on his phone. You're good. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's curious about it. Yeah. He's uh, 13. You're right, Jamie. Oh. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, his name's Jamie. So yeah, so hi he's, Jamie. Uh, yeah. Personal yep. shout hi, out to Jamie. Jamie. What up? Hi. Yeah, he said hi. I don't know if you heard it, but he That's said hi. That's the deepest yeah. voice nine year old yeah. I've ever heard. Cheers. I'm a, I gotta oh, move no, on. He's we're we're oh, okay. yeah, over he's time and running yeah. over time. Thanks yeah, cool. Thanks, Arlindo. Okay. Cheers, bud. Cheers. All right. I'm gonna try this one again. Elena, are you there? Elena has been on hold for an hour and 52 minutes. The whole show, but we can't get her on. Maybe we're uh, saying it wrong. Elena, and are you there? It's because we prioritize theists. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop her. The question was, how should atheists understand and approach Marianne Williamson? I don't know enough about Marianne Williamson, other than that she's a politician, left-wing, nutjob, anti-vaxxer, woo peddler. Mm -hmm. And um, my recommendation is just because, I mean, granted, she would be better on some issues than some, than some right-wing folks, for sure. Um, but if you're not trust, if you, if you, if science is a matter of convenience for you, if science always has to bow to whatever other positions you already believe that aren't supported by science, um, you don't get to pretend that you're supportive of science. And I would rather have people, uh, it doesn't matter to me whether it's a left-wing person or a right-wing person, if they're into pseudoscience and disrespecting real science, if they're anti-vaxxers and, you know, bad positions on climate change or whatever else, uh, you just call it out. Yeah. If they're wrong, they're wrong. One thing before we jump into the next call, if, uh, if we've got a minute, are, are you good on time right now? Cause I have no reason to stop. Well, I, I have, a, we have that thing at seven and I'd like to eat yeah. between, but we can keep going. Yeah, okay. and I've told the call screener. So right now we've got an atheist and a theist queued up. We'd probably only take additional callers beyond those two if they are theists, uh, uh, if we would even take those. So just so you know, lines theists. Uh, so as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, we are we are doing a lot and we are developing a lot and we have a lot in mind. And in the re in this last month, a couple of different companies, but notably the most significant one, Twitter, released open source basically how their algorithm works. And I've been spending a lot of time with that as well as uh, looking at others. The reason why I'm telling everybody this is we're going to try something because it seems to me that if you look out uh, at a lot of channels that are, are successful and a lot of companies that are successful, there are a couple of ways to do it. Uh, and one of them is cheating and we intend to cheat. And so I'm sharing this <laughs> with you uh, because I need in the future hundreds of people for this. However, right now I just want to start with a dozen or two, especially a dozen or two people who might actually help facilitate the rest. If you are interested in being a part of this experiment that we're going to do, it's very low effort. As far as volunteer wise, it's a few times a week. You may be asked to go and click like or share on a post or interact with a post, add comments, do things that we know on a specific platform. We get some sort of algorithmic points. I'm going to be fully out in the open that that's something I'm intending to exploit. If you're interested in being a part of that, especially this early experiment that doesn't need a ton. Uh, but a couple dozen to get started. Uh, send an email either to call the line at gmail.com or me, dear Mr. Atheist at gmail.com uh, with algorithm army in the subject line so I can quickly filter through it. That's what we're going to call the group, the algorithm army. Uh, also, you must be on Discord. You must have a Discord account. Uh, it can be a free account. You don't have to buy anything. You, you're never going to have to spend money on this. But uh, if you want to be a part of the algorithm army, this includes also existing mods, though mods can tell me on Discord. You don't have to email me. Uh, existing mods and screeners who want to be a part of this uh, can also reach out. But we're, we're launching the algorithm army. It's going to be a thing that is going to be useful, I hope, in our development and a way in which we plan to cheat uh, our way into these algorithms that aren't super great to controversial content, including still atheism. Uh, and so we're going to, we're going to use the, the powers that be to try and work against them. So again, email, call the line at gmail.com or dear Mr. Atheist at gmail.com, put in the subject line algorithm army and that you are interested in participating. Uh, and I'm going to most likely respond to you with a link, uh, that will add you to a specific group in our, uh, in our like company discord group. That's all I got. Now we can pop back on calls. You got a preference? Well, 
In that case, we'll try this with El Jorge in Kansas. Hey, hey, Matt and Jimmy, can you hear me? Yep, sure do. Yep, how you doing? Hey, uh, doing well. I uh, I admire you guys. <laughs> I've been I I discovered you about a month ago, and I've been listening to all the debates. Matt, I'm sorry for your debating side. That was painful. <laughs> but and you did a great. A lot of them uh, have been painful. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, no, it's just a community thing. So I'm a single dad. Used to be very religious. I was the club pastor thing. Uh, now I have kids, you know, depression and all that stuff. So maybe two questions. Do you think there was some value to the, when we were religious, I mean, I'm not, you know, just going to church meeting on Sundays. And what can we do as a community? Uh, but like I said, so I have two kids. When I was a kid, you know, I never had depression. I thought I knew better than everybody else. And I think that may be common for the religious, right? You always have an, an you always have an answer, but when we meet reality, okay, this is a real world. So we deal with challenges. So, so, so is there, you know, what are your thoughts about community? And I kind of jokingly said, Hey, rock and roll Jesus, like every Sunday was a, a concert, even if you don't agree with the lyrics, but there's some fun to that. So, so what can we do to sort of take care of each other? And thank you for everything you guys do. I'll be quiet now. You want to go first? Well, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so I, I this question comes up a ton and we get it a bunch. The version of the question we get a lot is, is there something, some value to the tradition of religion, especially these gathering on the same day every week, uh, that it's now lost on the other side of belief? And the answer is yes and no. Religion didn't come up with those values, those things which are valuable. In fact, religion has something that's incredibly uh anti-valuable and it it and it has coded itself it has dist it distracted you from all of that by these things that exist in other parts of society and other parts of being a human around other humans uh it, it has coded itself in these valuable things all of those valuable things can be done again without the religion not everybody feels the need for it i see a great value in in especially for people who are leaving religion to have some sort of uh, replacement for those good things. And I think that a lot of people, if you have a person who's just left Mormonism, for example, and you replace their Sunday ritual, which we already kind of do with this show, but maybe with something more in person, something that structurally resembles some of the stuff they did in the past, I think there can be a transitionary period where they that's a lot of value to them at the beginning, and then by the end it has less value. Again, not necessary for everybody. I think Matt and I are both people who don't feel the need to go and do anything church-like on Sundays. I don't mean to speak for Matt, but we've talked about it before. Uh, however, yeah. I, I can see the value for other people as well. So the answer, I think, to your question is, of course, those things have value. And some people want ritualistic root or root, more routine than ritual, uh, uh, want routine and to routinely be able to go, know every Sunday I go do such and such or every other Sunday and for some people, they're going to have that value. Um, and and so it, it, I hope we find more ways to replace that. We're talking here about it's why I'm plugging the Patreon because it sounds it always sucks because it sounds like I'm just trying to self-promote, you know, buy me stuff, patreon.com. But literally, it's you guys it, as 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 development grows, I figure out how to hold on to even even more less money. I, I figure out how to keep even less money for myself. We want to have a community center. We want to have events. We want to be able to replace some of those good elements of religion. Uh, but it's not anything that's actually a quality of religion itself. It can exist entirely without religion. That's what uh, I got. Thanks. I appreciate it, Jimmy. Yeah. Thank you. Any, any additional thoughts on that, Matt? No, just to say that, you know, you're, you're new to all this and you're asking the right questions, the questions that lots of other people have asked uh, many times before. And there are organizations that are doing some of this stuff, um, specifically looking to see, you know, what value there is, what value we should, uh, you know, be defending and exploring things like uh, Sunday assembly and, um, various humanist missions. There's also Unitarian Universalists, uh, churches and organizations, things like that. Um, so there are some resources out there that are focused on community building, and we are doing a little bit of that as well. 
uh, as did the Atheist Community of Austin for a while when I was uh, working with them. And uh, it's just... Uh, it, it, it's it's there's no easy answer yeah but there are people that are actively working on this stuff there are big questions and i think it's great that you know one of the first things that you started looking at was hey how do we do better with community here uh yep because you might be one of those people that end up being uh, the community leader found an organization, found a Sunday assembly in your area or, or something similar. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. thank you, gentlemen. Uh, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. I admire you. Thank and you. Again, thank you for everything you're doing. Bye. Yeah, love it. Thanks, Jorge. Thank you. Matt, if, All I, right. if I decide I want to start going by The Jimmy, would you? El Jorge is a the pretty Jimmy? awesome name. Yeah, El Jorge, the Jimmy. I, I, that just seems awesome. It does. It's like the other day we saw. I, I'm putting together a couple of, of videos and arguments and, and and various things, and so I've been focused on names a little bit lately. And in the back of somebody's car, they had like first name, last name, and then in quotes would be like what I presume is their nickname. Yeah, you know, like you could have uh, Jimmy. Pond face snow. Yeah. Yeah. That's this supposed was, to be our secret, but thanks. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> you could have uh, the first name, but the, the name that was in quotes was just man. And I'm like, I could see Manny. I could see all these other things, but just man as like, you say that to all kinds of people. It'd be like, dude, as, as opposed to the dude or guy, you might use guy to refer to somebody. But you use that, you know, but I'll just, hey, man, how can man be your nickname that you put in quotes? Hey, man, that's a cool nickname, but I don't know. Perhaps it wasn't English. Maybe it is Mon. Uh, I don't know. I'm it, trying it, to make it, it work. It definitely wasn't English, and it could be um, it could be something else that I'm missing along those lines. But Sure. Uh, well, this was a great nice. show. We did lose our other... I wasn't going to address it. Uh, we did lose our other caller, uh, the Theist caller, and, and so currently with no other Theist on the line, unless by the time I finish up this outro, a Theist generates a call and decides they want to challenge us, we will call the show here. A uh, few reminders. Uh, 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 well, lost them all. A year from now, look out. I, I imagine sometime this summer, as long as things are still going well, we'll release details. We'll hopefully have our venue and everything figured out. Uh, there is a pretty good note that some people have been sending me, which is you better figure it out sooner than later because hotels around the eclipse may already be booked up. Uh, didn't even think about that. That's a pretty good point. Uh, so we'll check on that. We'll check on these things. But otherwise, the first line con will be in 2024. It's looking like around this time uh, uh, next year, as long as all goes well. Additionally, if you want to become a part of the algorithm army, uh, call the line at gmail.com, dear Mr. Atheist at gmail.com, subject line uh, algorithm army. And tonight at seven o'clock, a mere two hours and 47 or one hour and 47 minutes from now, because <coughs> that's how math works, uh, you can join Matt and Arden. I'll be there at the beginning uh, for a, a special Zoom event. Uh, where you can face-to-face -face and ask questions. We'll be utilizing the hand-raising thing and trying to answer as many people's questions as possible. And who knows, maybe uh, some other surprise guests will show up too. I Legitimately, I have no, that's not a plan. Nobody has said they will, but I see Shannon's in the chat. She might go, yeah, I kind of want to go to that. I don't know. Maybe she will, maybe she won't. Maybe other people will or won't. I don't know who's going to show up. Uh, nope, this Shannon's not allowed Oh, I don't well, care how much she begs and pleads, how much she wants to. She doesn't get to come to my hangout with. Oh, wait, I can't do that. You know, what's so funny Damn is it. I'm positive for either of us. If Shannon called and said, I actually need you to let me in and not the other one. And we were in charge. Both of us would trust that Shannon has whatever's best in mind. Whatever, whatever's if, if best Shannon for us. If Shannon messaged right now and said, I really need to do that Zoom call tonight instead of Matt, I'd yeah. be like, go. Yep. We we both wouldn't question it, uh, but we both have a just very... Said, when is this outcome? It's tonight. Sorry, Matt banned me. It's tonight <laughs> in an hour and 45-ish minutes. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to think. Do we have any other uh, announcements? Well, I tell you today, today's a Sunday show, and yeah. uh, tomorrow is uh, Skeptalk. 
And, yes. and who's on there? Oh, thank you. Okay. I knew my brain was missing something fundamentally. I was like, there's there's something left. Okay. Skep Talk tomorrow is John Gleason and I can't remember the name of the guest. I'm pulling it up. But Godless Engineer is being joined by somebody. Then Hostility on Tuesday. It, oh, man. I have so much cool stuff to announce. Okay. Sorry. Uh, Hostility on Tuesday is going to be Forrest Valakai. I'm pulling it all up. I'm going to give you all the right names. Forrest is going to host uh, April 9th is now. Okay. Got it. Now it's not going to seem stupid. John Gleason. I'm going to see if a, I can win a bullet chess game while you're doing the announcements. Has a co-host. Forrest Valkai, but apparently it's not on the list. Forrest Valkai is going to be joined by Gabriel Hennens, a person who talks about modern day uh, child raising uh, and, and things that we did wrong in the past that a lot of people thought was the default. This Wednesday, Dave Warnock will join Matt Dillahunty on The Hangup. And I think... Yeah. What they might do, and I'm going to ruin right now because also last night in my elevated state, I already leaked this. Um, we're going to just announce it now for everybody who made it this long and hasn't left because we're wrapping up and gone, well, the video's over. I may as well go. On May 16th, the very first episode of Dying Out Loud with Dave Warnock will be airing on this very channel. Dave Warnock will be doing his own call-in show about dying, uh, uh, death and dying as an atheist, as a non-believer. Uh, that will be every Tuesday. Hostility will become a floating show uh, and still happen just at, at less predictable times and places, somewhat like Cause I Wanna. Uh, the Tuesday slot from now on will be Dave Warnock. Um, and uh, 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 that's that's going to be awesome, starting May 16th. Uh, then this Thursday will be Katie Montgomery and Arden Hart back with the Transatlantic Colin Show, one of my favorite combos what? of any show. Yeah, I'm very excited for that. Uh, and then we'll see if some Cuz I Wanna's and things happen this weekend. But be on the lookout because if we can pull it off, we will also be at some point this show launching a new debate style this month, launching a new debate style show this month and next month. And those will begin uh, uh, happening routinely. So those are the goals. Again, I'm not, when I said at the beginning, I'm here to ask you all to become patrons because we're not fucking around and and we want to we want we want to continue our momentum. I mean it. We ain't fucking around. Consider supporting on Patreon. It starts at five dollars a month and it makes a big big difference to all of us. And uh, remember that uh, terrible people have hundreds of thousands of of the patrons and we have a measly 350 or something like that. So come over and join on Patreon. Uh, to the person who's trying to queue up as an atheist, we did say only theist college for the rest. Uh, but yes, I did take the name J snow from game of Thrones, um, to imply that since my family lives in Wyoming, I am a bastard from the North. That is, there's the answer to the question. Now you don't have to keep waiting on air. Uh, those are all those awesome things. So come and hang out with uh, Matt and Arden tonight at 7 o'clock. If you are a patron, we'll post the link on there soon. That's in an hour and now 42 minutes. Uh, and other than that, I don't know. I'm good. You good? I, I'm better than good. I had fun. I, I I'm, too. I'm disappointed. And, and, you know, let's not relive every call. Uh, do I wish things had gone better with Perfect Dawa? Yes, but I really wish people would answer the question that they're being asked because if you're calling in to defend something and I ask a specific question, there's a reason for that. Yeah. And if you don't even make an attempt, then right off the bat, we all know you're calling in to preach. You're calling in to wait for your turn to speak. You're calling in to get people to go over to your live stream afterwards where you can talk whatever trash. Talk whatever trash you like because you are a garbage apologist. Very cool. Matt, the new outro, the way it's supposed to work, you know, on newscasts, as they go out, they look like they're wrapping up and picking up their stuff to leave. Maybe they make a oh. silent remark to each other that the other people can't hear. Yes. That's the plan for this. So, uh, uh, also cool. let's do uh, it. Thank you everybody. And thank you to our top tier patrons, the $50 and above. They are our credit producers. We will see you all later. Oh yeah. It's hush your hands. Oh, Oh, <laughs> <laughs>